Mayor Matt Girding, call the April 15th, uh, 2024 City Council meeting for the City of Summersworth to order. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Pepin. Yep. Vincent? Yep. Gibson? Here. Parody Catanzaro? Here. Misho? Here. Witham? Here. Goodwin? Here. Cameron? Here. Messier? Here. Councillor Cameron will lead the Council in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of Uh, next on the agenda, we have the recognition of our indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki peoples, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabuk, the people who have stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. Uh, item four on the agenda are scheduled public hearings. We have two tonight. Uh, first up, I will open the public hearing on Ordinance 13-24, which is to amend Chapter 19 Zoning Ordinance, Table of Uses, Table 4.A.5, and adding notes 11 through 11.4 regarding motor vehicle service-related uses within the residential commercial district. Uh, if there's anyone here tonight who wishes to speak on Ordinance 13-24, uh, please come up to the mic, state your name, and the ward in which you live in. Is there anyone here to speak on Ordinance 13-24? Thank you again. Just make sure the green light is on on the mic and say your name and the ward in which you live in. Hi, my name is Andre Martineau. Not sure what the ward is, but I'm 6th okay. Street. <laughs> Thanks. Um, thank you for taking the time tonight. <clears throat> As most of you probably are well aware of the issues we're having with now the car wash in Firestone, um, Firestone, for instance, four times this week had their doors open, even though they've been told and promised, et cetera. Waste our time, waste all you guys' time having to deal with this kind of stuff that we shouldn't have to. Um, and now along with the car wash, it is so loud, the crazy lights, which it's not too bad when it's later, it gets dark, but of course, when the sun goes down early in the year, it's horrible. Very noisy, you guys are welcome to come listen sometimes. We've been encroached on a lot. Um, there's been no consideration for buffers for sound, et cetera. Uh, the neighborhood we love, we're beginning to have a lot of anxiety and very unhappy with our situation there. And we want to see this go so going forward, we don't have more of this coming in and protect not just us, but the other neighborhoods around. There's a lot like ours along High Street that the setbacks aren't very far where they're really going to affect people in their, in their lives. So. Um, we really hope you guys consider. Uh, you guys wouldn't want to be in that situation, and we really hope you'll take it to heart. You know, the residents mean something here. We love Summersworth, and it seems like, you know, we're not getting heard, and we just keep getting encroached on. So thank you for your time and consideration. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Others wishing to speak on Ordinance 13-24 tonight? Thank you. Yes, and again, just make sure the green light's on and you state your name and ward in which you live in. Good evening, Jessica Brackett, Ward 4. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, City Councilors, I'd like to just read um, my thoughts after finding out about this last night, only through the neighborhood network, because we're not notified um, often, on, even in the planning board piece. We have visual sight to these businesses and are not considered a butters. Um, we have, however, lived in our home for 30 years, and each time there is what some call development uh, along High Street, more is taken from us, both literal land and definitely in terms of the enjoyment of our own property. We ha haven't seen water in our sub pump hole since the historic 2005 2000 uh, flood events that when FEMA was here in the city, but that changed last year. Our sub pump hole has been running every few minutes for weeks after the latest. Businesses have put in more parking lots so close to our neighborhood. Each new development plan does their own water shedding analysis, but clearly they have failed to take into consideration the cumulative effect of all of the vegetation that has been removed for the asphalt. We are now fighting to keep our homes from flooding with each new rainstorm. Even eight inch fences do not block the light and sound. It just creates a sound chamber. 
So many trees and other sound absorbing vegetation have been removed and replaced with swaths of asphalt for parking. How many vacuums are truly needed for a single car wash? I mean, it's insane. I've never seen more than two cars at a time using those vacuums. We are now staring at bright pink and blue neon lights in their entrance stations when I'm inside my kitchen and on my living room couch. The lights are on at two in the morning, four in the morning. They don't go out. We are left um, with glaring carnival lights, the size and brightness of the lighting and signs along the corridor pollutes much further back than what you might first imagine. When or why does a car wash need to be two to three stories high? Functionally, it doesn't. So why are we allowing that in our historic city? We have appealed to the planning board to stop granting uh, all of these waivers and shoehorning businesses into places they don't fit. Dumpsters being emptied at errands in the auto shop across the road at 4 a.m. Lights from Goodwill's sorting facility left on all night. Trash blowing in from the Indonesian satay restaurant. Those are too far away to bother our neighborhood, right? No, they do. They all flood in our backyards and our bedrooms. We could once enjoy and no longer are able. We ask that you approve the change in the ordinance in this ordinance to help slow the degradation of our neighborhood and our entire city. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, others wishing to speak on Ordinance 13-24 tonight? Others wishing to speak on Ordinance 13-24? All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance 13. Uh, is there one more? You're welcome to come up, come on up. <laughs> I won't close it yet. <laughs> Again, just make sure the green light's on and you state your name and ward in which you live. Green light. Oh, right on this, right on this, right in front of <laughs> yeah, you. Sorry. sorry about that. I'm like looking okay. up. Hi, my name is Lori Martino, and I'm from Ward 4 and uh, live on 6 East Street. Um, we have lived there since 2016. Uh, we have seen the changes from the tire place and now the car wash, and it is no longer the lovely neighborhood that we moved into. Um, my granddaughter asks me every time she comes over, she can go to the carnival. Why? Because all the carnival lights are facing our neighborhood. From when my guests stay over, that's what they see, the lights shining in, okay? And then on top of it, we have the noise from the goodwill, um, excuse me, the car wash that we can't enjoy our pool in the summer. Uh, we have immense flooding, which we didn't have. and. I would have to say everybody in the neighborhood thinks it has something to do with a car wash. So, um, and the, it's just, it's just horrible and ugly. And I just invite all of you to um, come to our neighborhood and walk the neighborhood when the car wash is going full blast because, you know, you think it's a windstorm, but there's no wind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Others wishing to speak on Ordinance 13-24? Again, come on up, make sure the light's on, and say your name and where in which you live. Hi, Thomas Alley, Ward 4. I live at 70th Street, <clears throat> across the street from these guys. I We purchased our home two years ago because it was a nice, quiet neighborhood that we were moving into. The car wash is definitely, I know it hasn't helped my property value. I can see it from my front door. I hear the noise constantly. Um, so it is an issue. As far as the water problem, one of the reasons we purchased that house is because it had a dry basement. I operate a small business out of it. And now suddenly I have flooding, which I did not have. There were no signs of water when we moved in. So was it related? I don't know, but it does seem pretty coincidental. That's about it. Thank you so much. Others wishing to speak on Ordinance 13-24? Yes, please come on up. Make sure the light's on and state your name and word in which you live. So I'm Brandon Viola. I live at 5 East Street. Um, I'm here, you know, here for the same reasons. Uh, I bought the house in 2018 and basement's been dry. Dry right up till the beginning of last year. This year alone, I had to replace two pumps. You know, they're not cheap. Nothing's cheap right now and the electricity Running, 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 running. 
And also, I brought this up to the city last year, that the storm drain, very front of my yard, it sunk down about maybe two and a half, almost three feet since I've been living there. So it's causing everything to flood in the beginning of my yard. My driveway floods, so that's just more water running into my basement, which is aggravating. Um, this morning, you know, same thing. My wife went to start a load of laundry and water in the basement. So I had to fly to Home Depot this morning, pay $135 for a new pump, and I just I don't know, spent over 100 for the one beginning of April, three weeks. So, you know, it's just aggravating. And, you know, I'm backing up the neighbors with the issue with the car wash and the tire shop. You know, every night, everybody walks through the neighborhood. We're all friendly. We all talk to each other. The amount of traffic that has cut back just a little bit from the tire shop because people are test driving the cars through the neighborhood at, you know, 30 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. It's a small, small neighborhood. And it's just, it's frustrating. And I like to see, see a change. You know, taxes go up every year, but there's always roadblocks or something jumping up next. It's just, I like to see something done. But that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Others wishing to speak on Ordinance 13-24? Thank you. And again, make sure your lights on, say your name, and ward in which you live. Good evening, Troy Brackett, Ward 4, 3 Shabbat Street. You've already heard the statements of most of the neighborhood that I live in, so I'm not going to repeat that. Um, we've been before the planning board. We know of quite a few of you, actually, over the years, and we appreciate the the help that you've uh, tried to give us. What I would ask, um, especially at the, to the council, is more of a rhetorical question. We opened the meeting with respect for the indigenous people that previously stewarded this land. And as the current stewards, I would ask, I appreciate the development and the need for progress. But at the same time, we are a community that needs to have residences as well. And as the current stewards, are we doing all that we should be to properly steward the very waterways and land that we say we respect um, of these previous indigenous peoples? Thank you. Thank you. Others wishing to speak on Ordinance 13-24? Others wishing to speak? All right, with that, I will close the public hearing on Ordinance 13-24. Thank you. All right, our next public hearing tonight is public hearing on the Community Revitalization Tax Credit Relief Incentive Program application, which is under City Ordinance Chapter 31, uh, from 200 Main Street, LLC, Timber Properties, for the proposed redevelopment project of 200 Main Street. Public hearing is open. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to this application tonight? Anyone who wishes to speak to this application? Yes, coming up. State your name, where you live. Good evening. My name is Eric Chinberg from Chinberg Properties. I've owned the property at 200 Main Street for over 20 years through uh, many fires and lots of uh, challenges and we have finally put together a plan we think that can work but the headwinds that face us from the residual high construction costs from um, COVID as well as high interest rates just make it impossible without all the help we can get and uh, the requests we've made tonight literally are requests that uh, if we cannot get would make the project um, infeasible to do um, and so we're hoping that the board would consider our request positively, and I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Others wishing to speak on the Community Revitalization Tax Credit Relief Incentive Program application? Any others wishing to speak on that? Okay. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing on the application. All right. Thus concludes our public hearings for tonight. Um, agenda item five is comments by visitors. Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speaker shall not enter into a debate with any persons, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? 
Anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Any visitors? Okay. All right. Seeing none, we will move on to agenda item six, which is uh, approval of the consent calendar. Chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the city council meeting held on April 1st, 2024, as well as minutes of the city council budget workshop held on April 6, 2024. Do I have a motion? Yes, Councillor Pepin. And move the adoption of the consent calendar. Thank you. Councillor Pepin moves that the <laughs> consent calendar be adopted as presented, seconded by Councillor Parity Catanzaro. Question for the council is the adoption of the consent calendar. If you're in favor of the motion, you'll state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you'll state by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, eyes appear to have it. Eyes have it. Consent calendar is adopted. <coughs> um, agenda item seven is comments <coughs> by city councilors. Are there any comments tonight? Councilor Vincent. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, got a couple of things I'd like to mention tonight. We're going into budget season, but I'm going to save that for last. Uh, I just want to comment on the on uh, the tax relief for Chimberg. I appreciate you coming out. Um, you know, uh, ironically, I served in the fire department at that time, myself and Captain Pepin here. I'm not sure if Dave, Dave Witham was there also. Three, three counselors were there as firefighters battling that fire. I remember it well. Uh, and to be honest with you, it's like that property has been in dilapidation from the fire sense. Uh, so just a comment that I would uh, respectfully um, – uh, want the tax relief for you. Uh, I think it would be a positive thing for the community uh, and it'll give you a little break because I know at the time it was devastating for your company. Um, I appreciate you coming out and sharing that with us and uh, requesting the tax relief. Thank you. <clears throat> the next thing I'd like to talk about is, um, yeah, nobody uh, should have to deal with Tons and tons of noises on noise uh, in your neighborhood. Uh, we have a noise ordinance, and uh, in general, it's a pretty good place to live. And then all of a sudden, a company comes along. Uh, so I would request to the city manager uh, to move forward with whatever we could do um, uh, for either code enforcement or just some nice letters. Because realistically, I think a lot of companies don't want to cause problems. I just think if you let them know uh, what's going on, I think that might be a, a good uh, step in the right direction. I'm hoping that we can get this solved. Um, I know you're experiencing water issues. Uh, however, um, it has been a really, really wet, uh, unordinary type of season uh, or year for a lot of water. Um, I'm not trying to downplay your issues. Uh, I'm sure that um, taking up uh, land with tons of asphalt, even though it could be the permeable asphalt, I'm not sure what the correct word is for it, but it lets rain water through and, or holds it so forth. Um, I'm not sure what we can do with that, but we can definitely look into it. And we appreciate, I appreciate you, this council appreciates you coming out and sharing your concerns. We are moving into budget season, which is always a fun thing. Um, you know, this we had a budget workshop uh, not this Saturday, but the past Saturday. Uh, and I, every time I come out of the budget uh, workshop, I always try to invent some things that could happen, maybe new. One of the things that came up that really uh, was a really good idea. I gave it some thought, but actually, Councillor uh, Witham brought it onto the onto the floor. Was actually maybe making purchases from our our balance that we have, our fund balance or um, our savings account, so to speak, and making purchases so it doesn't affect the taxes so we could actually kind of make it all happen. And to explain a little bit, um, you couldn't do it with like things like the budget or the city side of the budget because what happens is even though you take fund balance and you may pay two or $300,000, the next year that's just added to it. So it's better to take things like I think we use, for an example, a police cruiser. Uh, we could pay that outright from fund balance. And then that, because that wouldn't be in the next year, that would be a capital improvement. That will actually kind of help our tax rate. Right now, I think it's a $1.09. Um, however, um, we have um, 
it's projected to be a dollar seventy something because of the school budget, um, but it would require a tax override. Uh, I am not anti-school, but I am uh, take the wishes of the people of the city of Summersworth, and they came out and filled out uh, filled out um, in November some paperwork with voting, and they said they wanted a tax cap. I think this was fifteen years ago, and. The six years that I've been involved with this, uh, I said to myself, I would never override a tax cap because it's what the city wants. It so-called keeps the council in check. Now, I would override a tax cap if for some reason that one of our fire trucks, both of them broke down and we'd have to spend money. It's an emergency situation. Um, I just, I think we can try to come to a happy solution with the budget. Um, and there was one other thing that was, so we have a, a, a proposed budget for our roads, and we've been doing resurfacing. Now, I personally feel, and I'm just one counselor, that the roads in this city have come up tremendously in the last six years. And someone had mentioned that Councilor uh, Sprague had said, you know, we should spend a million dollars for a long period of time to get caught up. Well, he did say that, but that was like several years ago. And since then, we spent, I think we spent a 1.3, uh, 900,000. Sometimes it's a million. And I would just say, drive around. You tell me which road is really, really bad. And the reason why I put the, picked this out, that one particular line item, is because this council, and I've heard it several times, they say, let's leave it up to city staff. City staff is really good. They can take care of this. And so now the city staff has cut, I believe, the roads resurfacing 150000 which is not a lot of money. And they cut sidewalks 10000 Now we want to kind of not go with city staff. That's, that's the feeling of, I think, some of the people in the council here. And we want to just up it. I think our roads are really in good shape. I would rather put the money towards sidewalks that's my thought i just think that sometimes you know we put out that city staff is doing a good job and then now we're not happy with city staff i think we should go with city staff thank you thank you other comments from councillors tonight yes councillor goodwin <clears throat> thank you Anna. um i wanted to thank the members of the community that came out tonight to spoke speak in favor of the zoning change to chapter 19 to restrict motor vehicle related uses within the residential commercial district along high street um, it was their advocacy during my time on the planning board which uh, alerted me to some of the concerns you heard this evening and uh, is one of the reasons that i put forward this zoning change uh, justine musk elon Musk, Musk's ex-wife, when asked about what contributed most to Elon's success, said it was his ability to say no, to stay focused on what was important and what was valuable. Summersworth is just 10 square miles, and we have limited space. And I completely agree with the comments made earlier. We are, we, the city council, are the stewards of this land via the zoning ordinances which we Act and the powers we delegate to the land use boards. We don't have the luxury of space that other communities have not to be thoughtful about our growth patterns and development moving forward. Our community is well served by car washes and other auto oriented businesses on High Street, and I firmly believe we have better opportunities for growth. And I hope that my fellow councilors support this zoning change in seeking those opportunities thank you thank you other comments by councillors tonight yes councillor gibson and then councillor parody Catanzaro. i'm not going to repeat what's already been said but i agree with both councillor vincent and councillor goodwin on their comments um one thing that i would add is i think that it would be appropriate given the issues just stated to have the appropriate boards look at changing some of the ordinances um, pertaining to sound buffering and 
um, light pollution. Ever since they came up with the newer high output lighting systems for display purposes, this has been a growing problem in a lot of areas. Um, I still remember the debate about Kyoto in their first uh, sign, I think it was, of the type that uh, went up in the town. Sorry, city. Um, so I think this needs to be addressed. And I was not aware, and I will make a point of driving that neighborhood now, um, of how severe the problem was. And my question would be is, do we need to change procedures at the planning board level or a different level as far as ensuring compliance with any new regulations that might go into effect? Because I can only imagine what it's like based on what's been said to live in that neighborhood and deal with this. And I would say that definitely need to review um, the approval process is ensuring all three concerns are addressed. Is there a drainage concern? Is there um, sound and lighting? Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Parity Captain Zero. Yes, thank you. Um, I just also wanted to thank the community for coming out. Um, it's a really big deal to have this many people come out. Um, and I thank you for coming out on a Monday evening. Um, and sharing your experience and thank you all for coming to Summersworth and I hope that uh, this uh, situation is at least somewhat mitigated by this ordinance. Um, and I appreciate that Councilor Goodwin created this based on some of your feedback um, in the neighborhood. Um, the, the traffic also was flagged for us, not something that had been raised before, um, but I totally understand how annoying that must be to have people test driving and revving around your neighborhood where before that didn't happen. Um, from an environmental standpoint, I was concerned about the increase of car washes, et cetera, from the parking, but um, to hear how it's impacted also your basements, mine too has been flooded a lot recently, um, but I'm sure that it does not help with the, um, with the car wash and other parking lots there. Um, so I will be supporting Ordinance 1324. I think it does a great job of addressing a lot of these things, including the automatic doors to make sure that they're closing and people aren't just leaving the doors open while, while all that noise is going on. Um, and I agree with the other counselors that anything else that we can do to make sure that those existing businesses follow that as well uh, would be really, really important. Thanks. Thank you. Other comments by counselors? Councilor Witham. Thank you. I'll save my comments regarding the budget and the proposed zoning ordinance amendment for the appropriate times in the agenda where they should be discussed. However, I would say that uh, I hope, I hope that no counselor here tonight is hearing the noise, the, the news that the, the residents have brought up here for the first time. They have been stewards of their neighborhood in front of the planning board two, three times anyways. Uh, the concerns they raise uh, uh, are, are not new concerns. They are continuing concerns. Uh, and I know that our city code enforcement staff has been very vigilant about trying to enforce closed doors and cars in the neighborhood and noise and all of those issues. Uh, we've had them in front of the planning board, I believe now twice for compliance hearings. And again, every counselor should have watched that meeting on TV, should have read those minutes, that is our duty. So hopefully nothing here tonight is new, right? Uh, they're just reinforcing it. Uh, and unfortunately, I'll save that for the appropriate time in the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments by counselors this evening? All right, seeing none, we're gonna go to agenda item eight, which is communications we have none. Um, without objection from the council, I'm gonna ask that we move to agenda item 16. Um, under other, we have three items for vote tonight. I uh, just wanna get them out of the way before what I imagine may be a lengthy discussion about the budget and our ordinance change. Your Honor, may I request that 
we at least go to reports of committees as committees have reviewed many mm. of these and I'd like to report I on I think that's a great point. Yes, report. we can wait till after that. I think that's a great point. Thank you. No, no, I, I appreciate the insight. Um, item nine then, we'll jump to item nine, hold off on that change. Uh, item nine says, is uh, pr uh, presentations of petitions and disposal thereof by reference or otherwise, we have none. Um, item 10 is the mayor's report uh, with the hope of dedicating more time tonight to our budget discussion. I have no mayor's report and will yield my time to the budget discussion. Um, item 11 is uh, reports of standing committees. Finance committee, uh, Chairman Witham, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, the minutes are not yet prepared, but we did meet last week uh, with regard to uh, a number of items that are captured under our agenda other tonight. Uh, we did approve the minutes of our last meeting uh, and moved into the agenda. We were missing one councilor. Councilor Vincent was tied up in Concord with the state business, uh, but all other committee members were in attendance. Uh, the first item that we took up was the request to waive city fees for uh, the redevelopment of 200 Main Street, the Chinberg property, the Great Falls Bleachery and Manufacturing property. Uh, I will say the committee supported this in full after some uh, discussion. Um, I, I would note that uh, we had a very good dialogue with Mr. Chinberg that any <laughs> fees where the city might have to sub out the work to a third party. Uh, a lot of those are borne by the developer through the, 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 the uh, application process. But should there be a fee that the, the city would incur that we would other have to otherwise have to pass on to the taxpayers, we thought that it would be appropriate for the developer to take on those, and he was in full agreement with that. Uh, we, we couldn't come up with one right offhand, but uh, again, through the development process, a lot of third party engineering, um, <laughs> fire protection engineers, those sorts of things are already borne by the developer. So we didn't see that that would be incurred by the city, but if there were some, uh, we would uh, address that. Um, the other item that we took up, there's no action on our agenda tonight, but uh, related, we had a discussion about uh, sewer impact fees. Uh, right now, the city has an assessment per bedroom, uh, which would be uh, in the I think $350,000 was the number that was roughly kicked around uh, based upon initial calculations of bedrooms there. The discussion the committee had, though, where this is different than maybe some other parcels that would be developed is that this was already a developed site. Uh, the Great Falls Bleachery and Dye Works already was discharging some amount of water. We suggest a fair amount uh, to the city's sewer system. So is this an additional impact? No, sort of a, a lagging impact because the bleachery stopped operations over two decades ago, uh, but they're sort of reestablishing uh, what was an existing impact. So uh, 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 Mr. Chinberg and his staff, we're gonna work with Director Smith and our, our staff uh, to determine uh, to the best we could, you know, what was the water usage, which in turn is the sewer usage for uh, the Great Fall Bleachery and Dye Works when it was in operation, and what's the net difference between that and what is projected with Chinberg, if you're following that math. Uh, uh, we're, we're thinking that at the end of the day, it's probably a wash, right? So that uh, there would be no impact there. Uh, and uh, lastly, with regard to the Chinberg properties, we talked about the uh, community revitalization tax relief. It did come out of economic development uh, to support that uh, for a seven year period. Uh, discussion at finance, uh, we were inclined to add an additional four years because of the historic nature of the property. Uh, they are, at least at this stage, planning to save what remains of the, uh, the, the, the mill uh, towards the southerly end of, of the site. Uh, we also noted that they plan to reuse many of the historic uh, foundation elements for either retaining walls, one area is proposed to be a patio, outdoor area, uh, and the site in and of itself is historic uh, in terms of, of the city. There are also some uh, definite benefits to the city that we would uh, incur, uh, such as the, the beginnings of a river walk uh, or continuation thereof. Um, so uh, Finance Committee was in support of the, the additional four years to bring it to the 11 year mark. So uh, we would ask that that be entertained under that other item uh, as well. 
Uh, real, real quickly, uh, there's a parcel of land uh, uh, owned by Hilltop Chevrolet uh, that they have offered to convey to the city of Summersworth. Um, it is largely uh, a track of land that is not uh, particularly suited for development, uh, but is uh, 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 tied to city land that we own uh, connected to the Oaks Golf Course. Uh, we, we thought that there could be some benefit there. Uh, the net tax impact is negligible, uh, so the Finance Committee does support uh, that particular uh, property transfer uh, to the City of Summersworth. Uh, we discussed the expansion of the library and support uh, the idea of seeking a grant, uh, an ADA accessibility grant that would help move that project along in terms of planning and design. Uh, which is kind of where we're at right now. Obviously, no funding for that project has been uh, in, in place. Um, I think that's all I need to report on for tonight as it relates to the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Government Operations Committee, Chairman Mishu. And we have not met, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Economic Development Committee, Chairman Goodwin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, the Economic Development Committee uh, hosted a public um, uh, information session slash uh, workshop relating to the disposition or potential reuse of uh, the one winter street parcel um, the meeting did not have quorum so it was not technically um, an economic development meeting however uh, we did have a uh, discussion with the community members that uh, came out and we reviewed three general uh, strategies for uh, the parcels potential reuse open space parking and development um, and the Economic Development Committee will review um, the notes taken during that uh, that session for a recommendation to council. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Rhythm. Yeah, one final item. It, it occurred under other miscellaneous at the finance meeting, so I forgot. Uh, under other uh, business, uh, the C, uh, the Coles Pond uh, property, uh, the Finance Committee does support moving forward with that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, Public Safety Committee, Chairman Pepin. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Uh, next up, Public Works and the Environment Committee, uh, Chairman Witham. We have not met. Thank you. And lastly, Recreation Committee, Chairwoman Cameron. We have not met, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, all right, next is reports of special committees. Are there any reports of special committees tonight? Yeah. Councillor Pepin. Yes, thank you. While we're on the talk about 200 Main Street, uh, we had an E911 meeting this morning at 11 o'clock at the Police Department. Uh, is um, as everybody kind of like knows the access to the old bleachery used to be got 200 Main Street which was like a walkway over the over the railroad tracks to the main building um, no vehicles could ever get through there or whatever so that kind of like puts uh, the developer in basically where all the deliveries were made was off of River Street which was gonna it was just gonna be their main entrance into the building um, the developer did add some, uh, suggested some names to the committee. Uh, we went through review through the state. The state kind of like didn't like two of them, so we kind of like shied away from them. They recommended us not use them because they sound something similar to other other streets that we have here. Uh, they came up with Tribility Lane, Embankment Street or Lane, and Textile Lane. They, the committee kind of liked Textile Lane. Uh, and that's what we went went and voted for uh, so hopefully you'll have a resol uh, a resolution coming up to accept that as a non-public uh, non-public street uh, it'd be a private right away so so that helps them get started on the development so and that's all I have to report thank you honor members of uh, Council, I offer the following comments. They're included in the packet for this evening. Uh, I did provide under Ordinance 1324 the zoning ordinance uh, proposed change, uh, a map showing the proposed amendments affected area that was prepared by the Planning Office staff. So hopefully you had a chance to review that in your packet. In regards to uh, the vote to approve the Community Revitalization Tax Relief Incentive Program application for 200 Main Street LLC. As reported out by the uh, finance chair, EDC Economic Development Committee met on April 1st and voted to support 
the request for tax relief for seven years pending information on the eligibility of placement on the National Register of Historic Places, which could add another four years of tax relief. I provide you a copy of the application, an email from Essex Preservation Consulting regarding the National Registry listing, and a memorandum from Director Mayors. The Finance Committee has reported out, met on April 1st, and recommends 11 years, as the Chairman indicated earlier. Uh, and I also provided you a copy of Chapter 31, and as Council gets into deliberations for, for this particular uh, application, uh, I think most of you are aware you'll, you'll need to uh, articulate what the public benefit is, and I think the application actually spoke to some of those issues and was discussed by both committees. Regarding uh, the request of 200 Main Street LLC to waive all city fees associated with 200 Main Street Redevelopment Project to include application fees, permit fees, water sewer connection fees, and impact fees, and to provide city support in obtaining grant proceeds for the removal or rebuild of the Main Street pedestrian bridge. That was articulated in the application itself. When the Finance Committee met, uh, Mr. Chimberg was, was there and he withdrew has asked for city assistance to seek grant funding regarding the pedestrian footbridge. Um, again, the uh, Finance Committee did vote to waive all the fees listed in City Ordinance Chapter 20 Building Code. So that would be the uh, actual billing permit, uh, application costs, as well as other um, electrical, mechanical uh, costs that might be incurred on application. And as we pointed out, the committee recommended staff follow the water and sewer ordinances and agreed that the developer pay for any third party costs. The next item in regards to a state law, New Hampshire RSA 67441. The City Council, which is the local governing body for Somersworth, after review and comment by the Planning Board, uh, votes to authorize the issuance of a billing permit for the erection of a building at 35 Coles Pond Road, which is a private road. I provide you. Um, various copies of uh, information. Uh, the Planning Board met on February 15th and voted to support the applicant's request. Um, Director Mears provided some information in regards uh, to the actual building application. I provided you a copy of RSA 67441, and we also provided minutes of the Planning Board meeting where this project was discussed. Again, Finance Committee voted uh, to support this authorization, and I have also uh, uh, included a copy of a draft hold harmless agreement that were reviewed by city attorney and recorded prior to the issuance of a building permit per the RSA. So the city holds the, there's no liability attached if the city uh, issues the building permit. Uh, a counselor asked about the cable fund, and I provide you the, this, this note in regards to the cable fund. Unless the community restricts the use of cable TV franchise fees, either either in the franchise agreement or through action of the governing or legislative body, franchise fees are considered general fund revenues and can be used for any municipal pur uh, purpose. Our franchise agreements with both Comcast and BreezeLine do not restrict the use of franchise fees. That concludes my comments, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Without objection, hoping we can jump to um, item 16, which is new business, and do our three under other. Also, because we have a number of folks here tonight um, interested in Ordinance 13-24, I would ask that without objection, Council do item 15 after we conclude item 16, and then we will return to the regularly scheduled program. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, starting at other, we have three items to vote on tonight. Um, First item is a vote to approve the Community Revitalization Tax Relief Incentive Program application, which is under City Ordinance Chapter 31, for 200 Main Street LLC, Chimberg Properties, for the proposed redevelopment project of 200 Main Street. Um, before we vote, I'll open it up to discussion. Yes, I mean, yes, Councillor Witham, then Goodwin. Oh, actually, if I, if you wouldn't mind, start with Councillor Goodwin, please. Yes, uh, I, I would like to uh, recuse myself from the discussion and vote on this item. I am an employee of Chimberg Properties and uh, will take my spot in the audience. Thank you so much. All right, Councilor Wortham, you have the floor. Thank you. Let me just begin that we have a number of examples here in the community of uh, Chimberg Properties redeveloping uh, sites. Uh, 
the uh, former shoe shops on Canal Street uh, are a very good example. They are vibrant, uh, busy housing, mixed use, uh, uh, well-maintained properties. Uh, a more recent example after uh, maybe a decade or more of debate about what to do with the property, uh, Chinberg Properties undertook a renovation of the Hilltop School property. Um, and I think if anybody were to visit that community or drive by that community, um, it has uh, largely been embraced. It looks great, uh, provides uh, additional housing, which is so uh, needed in the community. So I have every expectation just based upon that track record that it would uh, continue here. Given the nature of the site, still 200 Main Street, not yet Textile Way, um, uh, it has been cleaned up a bit of late, but I think if one were to drive uh, and view that property, it would meet the definition of a urban blighted property. Um, the good news perhaps is that it sets behind a row of houses on Main Street and well off of River Street, so it's kind of hard to see. But if it were more prominent, we would all say that is a blighted property and something needs to be done. Uh, and I understand the, the setbacks and limitations of the site. It's steep terrain. Uh, having seen the conceptual review at the planning board level, uh, the redevelopment of the site is, uh, uh, I think it's very unique. Uh, instead of one large building like the mill was, there'll be three separate buildings, at least conceptually as they see it right now. One being the existing mill building that'll maintain its historic character, which speaks to what we're looking at here with the 11 years, which I think I support. Uh, we hear it from many developers that uh, the cost margins are so tight because of the escalation in construction costs since COVID, and certainly uh, the alarming rise in interest rates that uh, uh, folks are seeing with, uh, with development of, of this nature. So, for those reasons, I certainly support this. But if you think about it from a community perspective and just articulating a few things that the manager indicates that we should, uh, this revitalizes a blighted property. It will provide uh, a number of additional units of housing, which we know from every study and expert that we are so underserved in the area. Um, it places uh, potentially hundreds of people within an easy walk of the downtown, which uh, I can only view as supportive of those services. Uh, the plans call for uh, the development of a river walk along that property. Uh, that is an excellent stretch, right? The uh, Eclara property, we don't know the, the final disposition of that, but there's an opportunity for connectivity once we get there. So this is uh, an important springboard to that. I mean, I think the list could go on and on, but those are the, the things that I would articulate in my support of the 11 years of relief here. Thank you. Thank you. Others wishing to discuss, Councilor Vincent and then Councilor Parity Martin Zero. Thank you. And thank you, Council Witham, for, the, for that because everything is true. I just, I'm just going to more focus, because I had opening comments on, I'm just going to more focus on the tax relief. You can either vote for it or against it, and if you vote against it, then nothing ever happens. Uh, you know, sometimes as a city or a town, we're a city, so we'll talk about that side, you have to have a little give. This city has certainly given to other, given to other developers. Uh, so uh, what Mr. Chinberg's not only brought to Summersworth, to Newmarket, to Dover, to everywhere that I know of in this area that they've built things and made a better place. And you know, what I really appreciate is the quality of the property. It's not dilapidated. It's not falling apart. It, there's not trash here and there. It's a really well organized um, business. Uh, and I think uh, the man takes pride in uh, what he does because he's obviously giving a good product and I definitely would support the tax relief. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Yes, thank you. I uh, just wanted to make a comment on the, from the economic development side. We had voted initially uh, for seven years just pending uh, hearing back from one of the historic experts, which I think we, we got that response the next day and uh, I reviewed it in the packet and everything 
looks amazing. And so I just wanted to say that the intent behind the Economic Development Committee um, was to go up to 11 if that information came in and it did. So um, I'm in full support of this for the 11 years. Thank you. Other comments by Councilor Aries? All right, seeing none. Um, if you're in favor of the community revitalization tax relief incentive application for Turner Main Street, you'll state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. With them? Yes. Goodwin? Recuse. Oh, that's right, I'm sorry. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. All right, the application is approved. Uh, next up, we have a vote to approve the request of 200 Main Street LLC Turnberg Properties to waive all city fees associated with the 200 Main Street redevelopment project to include application fees, permit fees, water sewer connection fees, and impact fees, and to provide city uh, support to obtain and grant pro uh, proceeds for the removal or rebuild of the Main Street pedestrian bridge. Again, open it up to discussion. Oh, sorry, Councilor Pepin, I apologize. <laughs> uh, I'll just say one thing. Uh, the bleachery used a lot of water, and they, and they dumped a lot of materials down our, our, our sewer and stuff like that. So um, I'm all for waiving this off, and one of the reasons why um, I think if you look at the figures, I think it will probably be what they're going to be dumping into the system is going to be the opposite way around. That It isn't going to impact. It will probably be a less of an impact than what was there in the, pa in the past. So that's it. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Witham. Yeah, just real briefly with regard to the pedestrian bridge. Um, it was discussed at some length at the planning board during the conceptual review process. And I think there was at least a, a desire to try to keep it because it would add connectivity right to Main Street. Uh, it's just the topography of the land. You would have to uh, put in elevators and it, it would have to be a thing in and of itself, which is just cost prohibitive. Uh, not the least of which is that it goes across the railroad tracks, and that in and of itself could be a bit of a uh, quagmire, to say the least, because dealing with the railroad uh, is it's just difficult. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? All right. Seeing none, um, if you're in favor of the request, uh, the request, excuse me, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. All right, request is approved. Uh, next up, we have a vote to authorize the issuance of a building permit for the erection of a building at 35 Coal Pond Road, which is a private road, uh, which is in, in accordance with New Hampshire RSA 675 colon 41 and after review and comment by the planning board. Um, before we vote, again, open up to discussion. Yes, Councilor Witham. Yeah, this has been through not only planning board, but the Conservation Commission. It is a very small house uh, on, uh, and kind of, they're removing what I might call an old camp uh, that's, I could have probably built one when I was a Boy Scout. It's not much there. So uh, I'm in support of this. <laughs> Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I remember them coming um, in front of one of the boards. I, I sit on the ZBA. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I know some of the residents were, like, concerned about this. Uh, but realistically, there's really nothing that we can do. They're allowed to get a building permit just as long as they make, meet all the setbacks and so forth. And apparently they have. So i definitely be in favor of this. Thank you. Councilor Parity, Cat and Zero. Uh, yes, I appreciate um, the previous comments. I um, I was a little concerned when I saw the resident pushback and also the Conservation Commission, but it seems like those things had been discussed at length and addressed. Um, I'm familiar with that property. It's you know a shed is a, a big word to use for that for that tiny little thing, but it looks like what they are putting there is uh, 561 square feet and very very small. So um, I'm in favor of this as well. Thank you. Other discussion. Seeing none, if you're in favor of issuing the permit, you'll state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. Uh, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. All right, permit is issued. 
All right, again, we're gonna go a little off script, jump to agenda item 15, which is unfinished business, um, again, without objection. Um, and the chair will recognize the clerk for a second reading on ordinance 13-24, which is to amend chapter 19 zoning ordinance, uh, table of uses, table 4.a.5, and adding notes 11 through 11.4, regarding motor vehicle service related uses within the residential commercial district, which if approved would prohibit zoning for businesses that sell repair or service motor vehicles within the residential commercial district. City Clerk. Ordinance number 1324 to amend chapter 19 zoning ordinance, table of uses, table 4.A.5 and adding notes 11 through 11.4 regarding motor vehicle service related uses within the residential commercial district. Thank you. All right, ordinance 13-24, having been read a first and second time, is now open to further amendment. No amendment being offered. Uh, Chair will look for a motion on ordinance 13-24. Councilor Pepin? Move for its adoption. Councilor Pepin moves for the adoption of ordinance 13-24, seconded by Councilor Gibson. A motion for the council is to adopt ordinance 13-24. Is there a discussion? Councilor Witham? Thank you. Let me begin that I think the spirit of what is introduced here is, is good. Um, and at the end of the day, I'll probably end up supporting it, but it's, it's the challenge that we have here in Summersworth. I think it's a challenge that you see across the state. It's more pronounced here in Summersworth because of our uh, density and our 10 square miles. So let's go on a journey here there is a quest by most every community here in new hampshire to encourage uh, commercial development why it's taxed at a higher rate uh, and our only source of revenue is property taxes so there is a, a thirst to lessen the burden on homeowners by offsetting that with property taxes from commercial development which is much higher so therein lies the fight, right? It's the challenge. If, if, if we didn't have such a heavy reliance on property taxes, the conversations about development become much easier. But that's the, it's sort of the chicken wishbone. But I can't disagree that a quality of life is expected in a neighborhood, not to have glaring lights, uh, cars speeding through the neighborhood uh, or the sounds of industrial vacuum cleaners, right? Uh, I wouldn't want that in my neighborhood either. No matter where you are in Summersworth, oh, I said that's not true, but wherever residential communities abut areas zoned for commercial development, there is always going to be some sort of impact. Some impacts are greater than others. Obviously, I, I think we would agree that a, a car wash or a service station with open doors is a much greater impact than uh, a building, uh, than a medical office building that's only open during the day. Just use that a, as an example. Because in the High Street Corridor, there are medical office buildings that abut residential neighborhoods and I don't, I've never gotten a call about them. I probably would guess no, no city councilors have, right? The, those two things coexist. So I think what Councilor Goodwin is introducing here is not to squash development in those commercial areas, but to just be a little more mindful about what those things are, right? Uh, and it's called out specifically motor vehicle because of recent examples perhaps maybe there are others that we need to be con considered uh, consider as well um, and we heard testimony tonight about goodwill and a restaurant right so uh, that I don't think we're on my radar screen certainly um, I came to the meeting thinking you know perhaps should this ordinance be routed to the planning board I thought about you know do we table this instead of the planning board because I've always felt that zoning ordinances should have a sort of uh, the purview of some discussion at the planning board level. Um, if there was a majority of council that supports that idea, I'd jump on board with that, but I'm not gonna 
land on that sword by any stretch here tonight. Uh, I think I can support this. I, I kind of get where it's going uh, after some reflection and certainly the the testimony that people brought here tonight. Uh, public comment is important. Uh, people are heard here, and I appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Perdy Catanzaro. Yes. Um, ditto <laughs> to what I said earlier and to a lot of what uh, Councillor Witham said. Um, I think in addition to the very legitimate concerns raised by the residents, um, something that I'm not sure if we've discussed really at the council level, but we discussed at the economic development level where this ordinance originated is that it's not just um, the nuisance factor. It is also, um, you know, looking at various types of commercial use, a look particularly at car washes, um, they're pretty much fully automated, at least most of the ones on that street are. Um, a higher and better use, commercial use that still gets us that higher tax rate is something that brings jobs into Summersworth. I think in addition to housing, having a place to work in this community is also a really good use of um, something that we'd want to see there. So would love a medical office building <laughs> or, or any sort of um, business use that would bring some jobs into the area and that would be much lower of an impact when it comes to a lot of the nuisance questions that were raised here. Um, um, yeah, I think the intent of uh, this going through Economic Development Committee was again, you know, what kind of a vision do we want for our city? And I think for particularly High Street, you know, there are other more industrial areas. In fact, they're zoned industrial or only commercial, but for this stretch of High Street, that's residential commercial. I think limiting this type of business um, opens us up for a lot more creative ways that will spark more economic development. Um, there had been some discussion by, um, I can't remember who now, about um, a lot of reporting done recently about how car washes are the new investment bubble. Um, and one thing I would not want to see on High Street is this new investment bubble. So a, a business that is really sold to people these days as just this is a really easy one-time cost and then it basically runs itself. You don't have to pay for anyone to work there and you make all this money. Um, and then that investment bubble bursts and you're left with a lot of empty parking lots. Um, I think it's really forward thinking to address this now and I will be supporting it. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Mishu. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> I was reviewing this ordinance over the weekend and I needed some clarification on it. So this morning I stopped in the planning department and talked to our planning director, Ms. Mears, and she gave me a lot of clarification and really understood what was going on for this. And the biggest thing that impressed me the most on this was the fact that there's teeth added to this ordinance. So it gives our code enforcement officer to be able to enforce this a lot easier than what it's already there. So passing this, I, I'm very much in favor for. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councillor Rhythm, then uh, Mess here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councillor Mishu, uh, that's a great point with regard to enforcement because this zoning ordinance change does nothing for the existing businesses that have impacted people uh, here. Uh, however, uh, that is a compliance issue that our staff can focus on. You know, when I hear things like the noise of the, the vacuums, we have a, a, a noise limitations at edge of property and then off property, and those can be measured with instrumentation, uh, and we should be doing that to make sure that the businesses are in uh, compliance. So, again, they, they're, they run parallel tracks. They're not the same thing, but they're related. So. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Messier. Thank you. Uh, I'm kind of on the fence on this. I understand the emotion of the neighborhood and what the intent of this is to do. But all I ask is you guys think of the future. Retail is gone. I mean, we, we want economic development. How do we limit and who, who picks winners and chooses? The city really doesn't pick them. People that have property put it up for sale, and whether it's an investor or whoever buys it and puts it up. What's this going to do? The 
Catholic Church on high streets for sale? Hypothetically, what if Market Basket wanted to go there? Does that restrict that? Have you guys picked them as a loser? Um, so, I just don't. I understand the emotion of that, those neighborhoods over there. But you got to look, what's the future? Retail is diminished. I'm not saying you need first I'm not saying we need more car repairs or tire shops or whatever, but what's what kind of vision for the future do you have? Who do you think's gonna go there? So I guess we can support this, but in the future if there's no development which then affects the tax cap, then good luck. Um, most kids, my daughter, my son, they purchase everything online. So, I shops aren't going to be there. Give me some idea of in the future. What do you think is going to go there? Um, so, good luck. Oh, thank you, uh, Councillor Gibson, and then Vincent. Okay, not. I hate to say this, but the reality is government on a regular basis picks winners and losers, if you want to put it in that context. I don't think that anybody is losing in this, um, other than if it's not approved, the potential for more losers as far as neighborhood communities goes forward. Um, The, you know, people like to say that we have a um, capitalist open market society, but if you look at history and what's actually gone on in this country for a long time, government has been interfering in markets, and I don't like using the word interfering, but the reality is government has a responsibility to all parties. And one of the parties is the residents of a given community. And maybe retail will disappear, I don't know, but I don't see car washes popping up everywhere as a, a really good alternative to retail. Thank you, Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Ron. You ever notice how when people build things, they never really live by it, meaning residentially living by it. You ever notice that? We've always had a history here of someone coming in and making a, 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 a multi-unit or even a duplex and then becoming an absentee landlord and living somewhere else down on Rye Beach somewhere. You ever notice that? Because I have, because I've owned property in this town, multiple properties. If you, buy, if you go buy Hilltop Fireworks, there ain't no noise there. We keep our place clean. And what I'm getting at is that, you know, with this noise, the guy that built the place does not live there, so he doesn't have to worry about it. He's just having the cars being washed, doing what he needs to do, and raking in the cash, right? Maybe, some of, maybe we should come up with an ordinance where the people that build it have to live there too. So I feel for the people, and I'm, in, and I'm definitely in favor of this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Goodwin. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just to, to clarify, this ordinance um, would not restrict the construction of a new market basket in the commercial residential district. Uh, this only impacts auto-orientated businesses, so places that sell auto parts, tires, repair shops, car washes. It's a very specific set of restrictions. It also then goes on to um, uh, reinforce some of the mitigating factors we have with those uses in other districts where they're so allowed, i.e. the industrial district. So a larger uh, setback between uh, those uses and uh, residential areas, automatic doors for auto repair, uh, and the like. So it is, is targeted at limiting our opportunity as possible. And, you know, to quote, you know, Justine Musk, there's power in saying no. 
there are higher and better uses for our primary commercial corridor, commercial uses, tax yielding commercial uses than another car wash. Um, again, I've said this before, but I, while on the planning board, uh, as the car wash that uh, we are, have, has been spoken about tonight was in construction, another car wash company from God knows where with private equity came in to purchase the purchased a lot across the street from Goodwill, both the uh, field there, and to build a car wash. And they withdrew their application, thankfully, because I think they learned that there was already a car wash in construction across the street. However, they could, under today's zoning, build a car wash across from a car wash. And we already have a number of car washes on the street. And as mentioned earlier, they are not contributing to our local economy in the same manner that other commercial uses do. And to Councillor Messier's point, um, I fully agree with his assessment of what do we want on High Street. And one of the things that I will be advocating for in my term moving forward is additional clarity and focus on our master planning efforts outside of the downtown. So I'm a long time downtown revitalization advocate. That is how I got involved in the job that I now have in real estate development. That's how I got involved in politics um, because I care deeply about our town and our downtown in particular where I grew up. However, with time, I've come to realize that our community actually has done a disservice to the other neighborhoods in our city by not having targeted master planning efforts with those communities because I feel like this neighborhood here and others that live along High Street should have an opportunity to have a discussion of what should High Street be? We have that conversation around downtown. We talk about what we want for the downtown. We've been working towards those goals for a long time. We've made progress. But our goals for other neighborhoods, other corridors in the city are very general. And we, they are build, build, build to lower the tax burden on uh, residents. And that is, in many ways a worthy goal, but we do not have the land that Rochester and Dover have to do that without consideration. We only have 10 square miles. Once that is built out and we build car washes, we build gas stations, uh, fickle cycles of the economic cycle, depending on what's fashionable with private equity or what the stock market is, thinks is hot. Um, once that property is developed, it now becomes significantly more expensive to redevelop that to some other use. And that is what this ordinance is trying to get at, is to say, hey, we've identified that we're well served by these uses, and we've also identified that we have higher opportunities for higher value opportunities for growth elsewhere, and we want to preserve what little undeveloped land we have left in this area for those higher and better uses, and ideally, in concurrence with a planning effort that goes out to the neighborhood and engages the community in envisioning what that future growth should look like. We have had a, a robust discussion and it's ongoing around housing in this community. And I suspect one of the recommendations that will come out of that is to encourage more multifamily housing in these commercial zones. It is commercial in that it is a commercial scale and is contributing disproportionately to the tax base. However, it plays much more friendly to abutting residential uses. So you know, just one item, like one low hanging fruit in my mind is just like, well, what could happen there? Well, you know, imagine that lot across from the Goodwill. It's a beautiful field. It abuts the Willand Pond Park. It would be a fantastic location for an apartment building close to the highway, close to all the services along High Street and close to recreation space. I mean, you know, obviously there's a discussion to be had before a change like that occurs, but that is a higher and better use than a car wash or a gas station. So uh, with that, I yield my time. Thank you. Other discussion? Councillor Pepin. Yeah, I'd just like to clarify one thing. I'm on the board for, for, uh, for St. Ignatius about the selling of uh, Holy Trinity and, and stuff like that. And I just want to make sure that uh, Father Aaron is made it perfectly clear that Mark Bassus hasn't bought the property. I know some of the parish says that 
has already been sold to Market Basket or whatever. Um, I can't say that Market Basket won't buy it in the future or put a bid in for it or whatever, but it, it's not for sale. It, at least Market Basket hasn't bought the property right now. So I just just make that clarification so everybody doesn't think they're moving right now. So uh, that's all I get to say. Thank you. <laughs> Other discussion, Councilor Cameron. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, these residents have been up before us a few times before telling us about their concerns. And we don't live in their neighborhood. We don't experience what they're experiencing on a daily basis. So I am in favor of this ordinance to help improve their quality of life over there and moving forward, making sure that we're hopefully making some better decisions on what goes in some of these properties. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion? All right, seeing none. If you're in favor of the adoption of Ordinance 13-24, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? No. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. With him? Yes. Ordinance 13-24 has been adopted. All right. <laughs> I love when we get applauded, isn't it nice? <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Again, you're more than welcome to stay for the rest of it, but if you <laughs> aren't interested, feel free to go home. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the budget is most like the budget. Line. Yeah, exactly. All right, that will bring us to item 13 which is nominations, appointments, and elections. We have none. Uh, that will then bring us to item 14, which is items that have been laid upon the table. We have ordinance 9-24, which is fiscal year 24-25 budget. Your Councilor Honor, Witham. I'd move that we remove ordinance 9-24 from the table. All right, Councilor Witham uh, moves that ordinance 9-24 is removed from the table, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Motion before the council is to remove ordinance 9-24 from the table. This is a non-debatable motion. Uh, so if you're in favor of the motion, you will please state by saying aye. If you're opposed, you will state by saying no. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Ordinance 9-24, fiscal year 24-25 budget is removed from the table. Um, as I have stated previously, it is my desire that the council bifurcate this budget uh, and start discussions tonight with the school side. Obviously, if there's time and council would like to go to the city side afterwards, I would be more than happy to, uh, for that as well. Uh, it is obviously at the wishes of the council. Uh, but with this in mind, being a school employee, I've made it also clear before that I will be recusing myself from the school section of the budget and we'll ask Deputy Mayor Witham to step in until Perfect. council has ended that debate and that discussion. Um, and then we'll be happy to step back in after that point. So I'm going to pass it over to council, or, or I should say Deputy Mayor Witham at this point. Thank you. Okay, ordinance 924 having been read a first and second time is now before you for amendment. Councilor Vincent. Um, does it have to be amendment, Your Honor? Or dis well, or discussion if you have discussion. I'd like to make a, I'd like to actually make a motion. Feel free, Councilor Vincent. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the city manager's budget as proposed. Second. <clears throat> motion before a council is to accept the city manager's budget as proposed. That's made by Councilor Vincent and seconded by uh, seconded by Councilor. I second. Oh, you did second. Okay, second. 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 Sorry. Um, second. So that is the entire budget, including the city side as well. Yes, at the one dollar nine proposal that the city manager proposed. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. <clears throat> Council. Just so I understand this motion, is by accepting the budget, are we uh, moving forward to discuss the budget as it's presented, or are we voting on its approval? The motion is to approve the budget as presented by the city manager. We're in the discussion phase of that. Ah, I see. Um, I'll, uh, I'll regroup. Further discussion? 
That's a parity can zero. Um, yes, so the current budget as it sits, um, I'm looking at the school side because I, I um, know we were planning on discussing that first. Um, when we met as a joint council and school board budget, it was presented to us that this is the tax cap budget that's in front of us, which uh, had to be put in forward um, by the uh, charter. Um, and there are there is also the superintendent's recommended budget, which, as it was explained to us, is to oversimplify just keeping the status quo of the school board, including the contractually obligated, um, you know, union negotiated increases. Um, and in between those two things, so approving this right now would be the lower end of that, the, um, the tax cap and the superintendent's recommended budget at the top, there were three different tiers of cuts proposed. Um, and so passing this would eliminate all tier one, tier two, and tier three eliminations. That's eliminating SYC, the um, Summers with Youth Connection, that is eliminating, I don't recall how many total positions from the school, but that's firing several people uh, and making cuts that I don't believe are in the best interests of our students. So um, I do not support approving it as presented. I'm gonna to yield to Manager Bell more than to you, Councilor Vincent. Yeah, since uh, the, the motion was for this, the approval of the city budget also, I just wanna make sure that councilors saw in their packet a memorandum uh, regarding the uh, Ordinance 924 fiscal year 24-25 budget. Um, our city clerk, provided a memorandum regarding comparison of election worker pay in other communities. And additionally, Director Smith uh, provided a memo in regards to fund balance. And I provided uh, some information in regards to budget adjustments I made in the city manager's proposed budget. Um, we discussed some of them at Saturday's workshop that we had regarding the master plan, sidewalk improvements and resurfacing. But I did provide you other comments regarding my budget proposal that were necessary in order to meet the tax cap in regards to police, highway, and fire, uh, particulars that were in the budget or not included in the budget. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Manager Melbourne. Uh, Councilor Vincent, you're recognized. Thank you. So this budget that the city manager proposed was pretty thought out. We had a discussion on it uh, a couple Saturdays ago, um, and we talked about taking money from here or there. I really think this fits the budget of the city at this time. Um, you know, being on this council for six years, I've, heard, I've constantly heard, and I gotta tell you, the past six years, the school board or the, or the SAU 56 has come before us, uh, I guess it's the school board, with a pretty balanced budget uh, that I thought. Uh, I don't think we ever cut it. Uh, and this year it comes to overriding a tax cap. I made it clear in my opening statements that I'm not supporting a tax cap. And I've also talked to other several or several other counselors that aren't supporting it either, overriding the tax cap. Now, if they choose to say tonight that they don't want to support it or they don't, that's fine. But I've talked to these counselors and they told me that they don't want to support it. Um, this year it's higher. Um, you know, I constantly hear this from the school board or from the school side that the city council cannot tell the school where they should cut the money. So I find it a little ironic that the city council comes, I mean, excuse me, the school or the superintendent's office or who's delivering the message, so to speak, has no problems telling us where they have to cut. So if we can't tell them what to cut out of their budget, I don't understand why they have to come to us and tell us what we're going to lose. They're pretty educated people there, and I think they can figure it out. Now, I'm not upset about it. I just don't like the fact is that I could have a really good point on where you probably could cut, but I have no say in that. So sometimes I think this should be like, it should be a two-way street. But it always comes down to telling us what we're going to lose. I understand it. I just don't like it. You know, uh, there's another concern I have about money. People sometimes don't understand the value of money. And, you know, 
nobody wants to go here, but I'm the counsel who will. And there was a significant amount of money spent on getting rid of the superintendent and the, and, and the other assistant there, along with legal fees. That came at a cost. I just, I have a hard time swallowing it. Uh, but the best thing about me is I'll let you know my opinion. And if you can tell me yours back, that would be great because I'm an open person. But I will not override the tax cap. Now, you know what? This probably is not going to pass at the dollar nine that I want to propose because we probably can grab money from here or there. And I'm open for that, even to the point where I'll retract my motion. But I'm serious about this. And I know there's other counselors here who are. Like I said before, if they decide to make it known that they are, that's fine. Or they can stay under the, the, the so-called kind of cap here. So I'm the only guy that will come out and say it. It doesn't bother me. But there's other counselors who think in my way. And I would encourage them to speak up. It would be great. Thank you. Councillor Gibson, you're recognized. I have to state that I second Council of Vincent's comments, particularly the part about the money expended in protracted legal battles. And I have zero faith in the administration and the school board in presenting a real budget to us. So I will not support an override of the tax cap. Further discussion, Councilor Cameron. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, my grave reservation about overriding the tax cap has to do with the other citizens of our community, not just the youth, because I've always been a huge advocate of the youth, having been on the school board, but the older population that we have and the rising costs of everything within the city. It, if we go up to a dollar seventy-three or whatever that final number was, it makes me wonder how are these people going to live? You know, we're, we're raising the cost of the bags, we're raising the cost of the water. Everything is going up. I think there has to be an appropriate balance between the two somehow to accommodate as best as we can both sides. Um, I know the population at the school is level off. It hasn't gone up, it hasn't gone down, which is a good thing. Um, but also, I've talked about this for the past few years, that the younger kids moving into the community, and people have talked about them moving in, maybe having kids. A lot of the millennials are not having kids. Their kids are dogs or cats. So that eventually is going to catch up with us and have an impact on it. Um, I'm not sure of the exact answer, but... I think that's where my concerns lie, is with that and overriding the tax cap. Thank you. Councillor Mishu for a first time. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Councillor Vincent, that was a, I'm very impressed, thank you. That was a good move. I'm not sure I can afford just passing it just like this, because I think there's other sections of the budget that needs to be addressed. But I agree with him. I have no appetite whatsoever in overriding the tax cap. Thank you. I'm going to take a whack at the pinata since I can. Um, when the tax cap was enacted by the voters, however many years ago it was, 10, 15, whatever it was, um, there was a provision put into the language that allowed the city council to override the tax cap. So the residents did speak that, yes, they wanted a tax cap, but they also understood that from time to time, there may be a need to go beyond it. I've always felt as a city councilor that to go beyond it requires some level of articulation. Just like when we granted the tax relief to Mr. Chinberg tonight, we articulate why we're doing something. I've supported twice in my tenure as a city councilor overriding the tax cap. Uh, and in both cases, I articulated why. 
and I would support overriding the tax cap uh, in uh, for the FY25 budget, and I'll articulate it why. One, uh, in preparation of the tax cap, we could not use new building construction. So uh, the, the, the number is artificially low out of the gate as compared to others that we've uh, calculated. It's also interesting that you know, the tax cap has impacts that are blind to real world conditions. And those real world conditions are continued uh, diminishing uh, values of state education aid to the community. So there's an impact there. And the other impact, which by the way, we created as a governing body, is we voted on contracts for various levels of educators in our school department. I sat in my seat there when I voted in favor of that, saying uh, there will be a day of reckoning and the difficulty with approving a contract, which everybody feels good doing and no one wants to say no to the contract, but there's a dollar and cents impact to that, that we own then. We didn't think about the budget impacts of that then. Shame on you as a city councilor. There's a budget impact to that. It's my understanding that the school department budget as presented does not even cover the cost of the contracts which this city council approved. So for us to be blind to having a conversation, a meaningful conversation about some level of override, I think is a disservice. So I will not support the motion before us. I certainly would support a motion for some discussion of level of override on both the school and city side. And without that, I'm probably not voting in favor of this budget. I'll yield my time, Councilor Goodwin. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm going to echo your sentiments. Um, I, can, I am not in favor of uh, supporting the motion on uh, the table and think that we should have a discussion around uh, an override, particularly with respect to the contract which we've already approved and critical services that the school has told us as a courtesy uh, are at risk if they do not receive funding, um, such as SYC. And we don't have line item authority, but uh, as several counselors have said over my course on the council uh, and even tonight, we have faith in staff. And I don't know why that faith in staff does not translate to the school district. Um, I have faith in staff that any uh, litigation they did against an employee was for cause and that money was well spent. I have faith in staff that the budget they put together both met the intent of our uh, legislation and needing to meet the tax cap, but also identified for us uh, the impacts that would have on the services that they are providing to our children two summers worth families. So I don't take lightly the recommendations that are being made for us to override the tax cap. I, I, if for nothing else, you know, maintaining a base level of services um, from year to year, stability for summers worth children and summers worth families is valuable. And I would also say that in addition to it being a reevaluation year where we cannot uh, factor in new development, we are also undervalued. Uh, we are under, the city is systematically underassessed uh, structurally, right? Because we do this reassessment every five years. So the property values have gone up significantly in the last five years, and we don't have a crystal ball, so we don't know exactly what the new assessments are going to come in at, but it's going to come in higher. And the expectation through staff is that our tax rate is likely to actually fall. Your nominal bill probably won't fall, but your, the rate itself will probably fall because the new assessed values are going to be significantly higher. So a falling rate is good. The nominal tax bill is what we really should be discussing here, and that is important. We don't have control over half of that equation, which is the assessment. Um, so totally understand that we're doing our due diligence here in protect, protecting summers with taxpayers, but there's also due diligence in protecting the services that we have committed to provide and upholding the contracts that we have approved.
Thank you. Further discussion, I think Councillor Vincent and then Councillor Gibson. Thank you again, Your Honor. So the whole back to the we have no say over the school budget is kind of troubling to me. You know, there's a lot of education in these nine members, but we can't tell the school what to do. I understand some sides of that. But when I take the number of children in the school budget, it doesn't figure out economically enough to me. And please, you people at the school know the numbers better than I, but roughly it comes out to almost $28,000 per student that we have. Somewhere in that ballpark. If I'm wrong, please come up and tell me that I'm wrong. Send me a text right now or something, please, because it comes out to almost like $29,000. And what I hear is I hear that some classrooms have two to four kids per class. And I want to I downplay that because maybe that's not true. But that's what I hear from people who call me as constituents who heard about this budget. And I'm sure that the school is like pulling the hair out maybe over there. And I'd love to be able to suspend rules to ask them questions. But look, so now that I've got the whole council really thinking about this and where we're coming from, I will retract my motion so we can get to business. Point of order. Yes, council. I made a motion and it was seconded. Don't right, the second yeah. has to retract as well. Correct. That's correct. I was just going to ask Councilor Gibson if you retract as well. Uh, I'll retract my second. I okay. have a comment. Got it. So just, uh, <laughs> Your Honor, we had to listen to 25 minutes of filibustering here, and all of a sudden he takes it off the table. That's what happened, yes. Yeah. Just for the record. That's so the where we're at, we're back to... Uh, the request is to, uh, ideally, we'd like to discuss the school portion of the budget uh, that is before us now per the request of Mayor Gurdy. And we are at a point where we can entertain any uh, amendments to the school portion of the budget. Are there any amendments? Seeing none from my fellow counselors, I'll offer one to see if it gets a second. I'd like to make a motion that we amend the school department budget by a, an, a factor of $500,000, a $500,000 increase. That's seconded by Councillor Messier. Discussion on the amendment. Councillor Parity Captain Zero. Uh, um, sorry. Um, amend it in which direction? Sorry, upwards to add. Yes. Thank you. I, and I'll speak to it a little bit if I could. Uh, I recognize that the tiered level of cuts that the school department had uh, are, are far in excess of that. Uh, what I'm trying to gauge here is what appetite for an override does the council have, and I think 500,000 is a reasonable starting point. Uh, as has been articulated by many councilors, we do not have bottom line authority over the school department budget. But what I do know is that $500,000 more is better than where we're at with the tax cap budget that was submitted by the school department and ultimately by the city manager. So. That's my proposed amendment, which has been seconded. Discussion, Councillor Cameron. So with that amendment, can Scott, can you tell us what that would do to the tax cap? You are so recognized, Finance Director Smith. Well, you, <clears throat> you're right at the tax cap. So 500000 would put you 500000 over the tax cap. Um, it would increase the tax rate by an additional... 43 44 cents and you'd be at thirty dollars and 82 cents would be our estimate uh, it'd be up a buck 79 for the discussion council gibson okay um i understand where you're coming from as far as defending the, the school superintendent's proposed budget um one of the questions that i have is Constantly rising special education costs, big chunks. Um, does that mean we have more needs students coming into the district, or does that just mean that the cost of general operations for that department are going up? Um, if we're drawing in more of that type of student, 
and please, I'm not picking on them when I say this, but the reality is they cost money. I would like to know why that is happening. I'd remind council that I could entertain a motion to suspend rules to have the superintendent or members of his team address the I don't the need council. that. I'm just throwing the question out there. Um, the other part is I can go along with 500000 added to the school department budget, but I would rather take that out of reserve than add to the tax base based on reassessments and also on new construction, the reserve fund should get replenished in the coming year. And people can blasely talk about nominal rate, but the fact is that nominal rate when you up the, up the actual percentage means I'm paying more for that, I'm getting hit with 10% more for my sewer rate and water rates, I'm getting hit more for my trash bags, and but hey, let me check my wallet. Yeah, I got plenty to spare, and there are a lot of people just like me that don't have the money to spare for us to blasely denigrate the position they're in. I'll go with Councillor Pepin next. He's been very patient. I overlooked you, and my apologies. Yeah, the problem is I don't have any answers. Uh, <laughs> for, for one thing is, is that uh, I wasn't for the full amount that the school board was asking for. All right, I, I'm kind of like leaning in your, your favor of what you're asking for. Uh, my feeling is, is that even that, I know how my wife served on the school board and kind of like having in, I served on sitting on their budgets and stuff like that in the past as, as, as council representative and I know how hard they work to try to propose a budget and stuff and I'm sure what they propose is needed um, but I'm also on the other side as a taxpayer too um, I haven't got a pay increase since I retired so I know what it's like um, so um, I have to look at that side too um, it, it, it bothers me that to keep good teachers to keep our good employees we increased the value of, of some of the contracts and we did that here and that is a repercussion on our part I mean if you didn't want the increase on the school budget we shouldn't have increased we shouldn't have approved the contract so that that that's where I'm hanging in, in with a problem with like Councilman Wynn brought up um, I don't know exactly what the right figure is I would like to spend the rules to have the school board uh, members or whoever the superintendent or uh, KD to come up and explain what the impact would be on the school budget because I think the public needs to know that so there's a motion by Councillor Pepin to suspend council rules to allow members of the school department to include staff or school board members to address the council and answer questions is there a second seconded by Councillor Cameron uh, all those in favor of suspension of council rules signify by saying aye aye, aye. any opposed no. One opposed, the chair recognizes that the motion passes. Um, particular person to start with, Councillor Pepin, Superintendent? Both Superintendent and Katie. Uh, okay. I, I know Katie knows all the figures, so she might, if, she's going to come up sooner or later. If both the Superintendent <laughs> and the Business Administrator would approach the podium, uh, that would be great. And thank you for your patience and your time. Hold on here. We got a question here from Scott. I just wanted to clarify something. I said that the tax rate increase would be a dollar 79 with this it actually be a dollar 53 so it was correct it was up 44 cents but it'd be a dollar 53 all right that aligns with my calculation you're on a dollar 53 you, so. your point of order was it a dollar 53 yes, thank you I, I, what's your pleasure I, I guess my question would be uh superintendent is uh what would be the impact of what we just gave for a figure i know this is probably cramming you with with off the hand or whatever so I don't know if um... I'm gonna have to work on through the tiers that I provided you in the school board uh, a number of occasions so um, I'm not gonna get into specifics tonight but if it's five hundred thousand dollars we'll work with it that's the best I can tell you right now um, I just want you folks to know that uh, we put this budget together with a number of people I'm sorry you don't have faith in the system mr. Gibson 
Uh, I, uh, that's too bad. I'm sorry you don't have faith in us uh, to do our jobs, but uh, I'm just going to have to take a look at the list and, and come up with the cuts that we need to make. Further questions of the superintendent or members of his team? Councilor Goodwin. Thank you. Um, just to refresh my memory, I have um, the tiers in front of me from a prior presentation. There's tier one budget reductions, tier two and tier three. Right. And um, remind me if funding, let's say 500,000 is funded, right? Which is, there's a total of roughly 1.3 million in total of reductions that those three tiers break down. Correct. So if 500,000 is given, I am assuming you're gonna prioritize the most important Correct. programs, which are tier three programs? Correct. Okay, so yeah. $500,000, and again, we don't have a line on authority, but based on the detail provided to us through the school district, $500,000 protects most of, almost all of the tier three reductions and would then put at risk all of the tier one and all of the tier two line items that have been presented, including the SYC, uh, including a special uh, ed para, para um, in the middle school, um, maintenance positions, things that seem pretty important to day-to-day -day operations to me. Um, granted, tier three and tier two reductions is n nearly a million dollars. Um, so my inclination, 500,000 is a great starting place, but my inclination is slightly more than 500,000 because it seems based on the information provided to us that we would need to override the tax cap for more than 500,000, more like 600 to $900,000 to protect tier two budget reductions uh, and the services uh, you know, therein described. Um, and of particular order of interest to me is the SYC program, which we've had a number of members of the public um, correspond with council on in interest of protecting and uh, 500,000 would not, um, as, as outlined to us by the school district, uh, go far enough to save that program. Thank you. Further questions of the superintendent? Councilor Vincent. Thank you. Thanks a lot for answering my questions. I know this is a difficult time. I know it's it's never easy. Uh, you know, you have I've been I've been through this a number of times. It's, it's I know. Easy. Yeah, I know. That's fine. It's just I, I just I just wish that we never had to go through it. You know, I really I really do. Okay. Uh, my question is this, okay, so okay, so several counselors have talked about the pay increase that we gave the teachers. Yep. Uh, how much of a difference from last year's, was it a 92 cents last year that we, that we gave to the school? Somewhere around there, right? Uh, and now we're at a dollar, no, no, what's the difference now? What is the difference? Is it, I, I don't know if you're, what the question is you're asking. The question is, so we, last year we paid the school or gave to the school 92 cents, correct? Not before that we gave educational funding. So th did you propose 92 cents last year? Am I wrong? I, I still don't understand the question. What, what did oh, we have to from the school department about last, last year? year? Well, I, no, I mean, the, was there a bigger increase from last year's proposed till now? In terms of uh, salaries? Yeah, what was the difference? Yeah, the bulk of your budget is going towards salaries. The vast you... majority of this budget, over 86% of it, is going to salaries. Correct. Um, if you're looking at, you know, teachers, between July and two-year period was a 12% increase. Paraprofessionals, a 21 and some change increase. Clerical, 19.5% increase. Police, we've contrasted police. The figures that I got from Katie were 16% increase and fire a 16 percent increase um, the paraprofessionals have gone up higher because they make less than the average person um, so it's all it's all related most of this is increase is related to personnel i mean but, and i will also tell you when it comes to salaries we've been advertising a special ed administrative position for two years at the tune of a range of 95 to 110,000. we can't get applicants we can't get applicants. I've been working this year without a special ed director and without a assistant superintendent. We've been, you know, operating on a shoestring this year. Uh, hopefully we can right the ship and, and get us moving forward next year. But uh, in terms of the salaries, we need to be competitive with the surrounding areas and we weren't. And the school board is trying to bring that up to make us more competitive. 
we still have openings in the district. The whole school year we've had openings in terms of paraprofessionals, and um, that, that's been an issue for us. So we're not able to fully staff the Sumler School District based on the salaries that we offer. So $90,000 to up to $110,000 is not chump change, so to speak. Um, however, it may be also, and maybe I'm wrong, I think you're more in it, that um, there's, just, there's just not enough people maybe to work that type of work. I, you know, and and is it for me to go out of bounds and say that Dover is having the same problem or Rochester, we don't know because I, they're not here to talk. But, I mean... I understand what you're saying, and that's why the counselor did want to make a move to keep the good teachers that were here by giving them a good salary. You know, my job would be easy if I came in with a tax cap budget every year, okay? And I think there's been budgets presented in the past that have been under, under budgeted, and now the time has come where you're going to end up paying a little bit more because there's been deliberate, I think, under budgeting over the years. And so I came in with this fresh set of eyes and said, this is where we're at, and I need to propose a budget to the school board that I think is just and right for the students of Summersworth. That's my job. My job is to propose. I don't have any skin in the game in terms of the tax cap or my, my proposed budget. There's no skin in the game for me. My job is to come in and present a budget that I think is reasonable, that's going to provide for essential schools, services, and programs, and then the board either agrees with me or disagrees. I go back and do my homework. Uh, the board obviously agreed with what I brought forward. Uh, we also made contingency plans based on the fact that we would have this discussion tonight, and that's why we offered up the tiered systems. Um, so if, if my job would be a heck of a lot easier for me just to bring in a tax cap budget. I, I will say this. I think the, the your comments are consistent with what you've articulated to the school board during your budget preparation there. Again, not new news, right? You, uh, I've watched the meetings and the story is consistent. Uh, there was a question asked by a counselor that you were not up here for, and I want to ask special you about ed? special ed. Yeah. Did you, I'd love to speak to special ed. Um, I've been involved in special education my entire career. Okay, I was a school board member for 10 years, and I wrote a letter with a bunch of other school board members over 20 years ago asking for the federal government to fully fund special education. It hasn't occurred. The state of New Hampshire doesn't fully fund catastrophic aid. It hasn't occurred. And so what happens is it's a shell game that gets pushed down to the backs of the local taxpayers. That's what we're confronted with on a day-in and day-out basis. With regard to the percentage of students that are identified, because of COVID, there's been a lot more referrals, not just in some ways, but across the country around social, emotional issues, um, the other thing that comes into play with special ed, kids are living longer today. Some kids that were born in the 50s died. With technology advances, we're seeing more students with health impairments that are coming to us that we have to provide a free and appropriate public education. So that's another factor that we have to contend with. We do have a higher percentage of special needs students in Summersworth. Um, I've been told from some of my staff members that people move here because we offer pretty decent special education services. So there's a combination of things going on here. It's not only funding, it's the fact that kids are coming to us that weren't presenting 20, 30 years ago, and the fact that um, COVID hit and it's re increased the number of referrals. You're seeing it across the board, across the country. The fundamental problem is the federal government and the state of New Hampshire do not fully fund special education and i know some folks here have served in the legislature i'd love to see a bill to actually come forward to fully fund special education in the state of new hampshire yep. and i'll close with this and i appreciate you answering and educating us there's a party that stands in between that that's all i'll say thank you yep. further questions of the superintendent or staff or school board members Seeing no further questions, so the motion on the floor is to increase the school department bottom line appropriation by $500,000. Any further discussion? Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Yes, thank you. Um, I was just looking at this tiered budget again, and thank you for yep. providing it. Um, I think it was a really helpful bonus for us to have, um, not because it is dictating anything, but because we don't have line item approval it's providing the information that we would ask for. Um, the tier three budget totals at 
491,000 and change. So this 500,000 only gets us tier three, maybe some part of one thing from tier two, but as uh, Councilor Goodwin mentioned, that's cutting the SYC program, it's cutting para positions, custodians, a teacher, foreign language position, it's cutting programs um, for our students. And so I, like Councilor Goodwin, would go further in that other direction. I think one way that I'm looking at this is we have line item control over the city side. So we've talked a lot about creative ways that we can pull things out of the city budget that are one-time costs, let's say, and fund that from the fund balance. So overriding, sorry, passing an amended higher budget than the tax cap school side of the budget is not overriding the tax cap yet. We still have the entire city budget to go through where we do have some leeway to get more creative and to use some fund balance for some of those city line items. So as far as I'm concerned, I would support uh, amending to increase the proposed tax cap budget by 1.176, the exact uh, recommended budget. Um, it's been many years since we have had a superintendent who only works at the school side and has no other skin in the game, as it were, on the tax side. So I really appreciate that we have somebody who's looked at, this is what the school needs, this is what we need in order to just maintain status quo, and um, I would like to fund that and find creative ways on the city side to get to either still under the tax cap, because we have figured that out on the city side, or if we have that conversation then of overriding the tax cap, do it then. But I'm in support of raising, um, I think I've, I've said my piece, <laughs> thanks. So just procedurally, Procedurally, we do have a motion on the floor to increase uh, the school appropriation by five hundred thousand uh, dollars. Pending the outcome of that, there can be additional uh, amendments made uh, to add more, take away, uh, and certainly to the point made, Councillor, uh, we have not yet discussed the city side of the budget. Uh, I will tell you that uh, in my uh, thought process here. Uh, we do have a healthy fund balance. Uh, we did discuss at workshop, uh, maybe picking off some things that we can just buy out right instead of budgeting for, um, like police cars. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, those are short dollar items. There aren't many of them in the budget. Uh, I don't even think it totals $100,000, right? So that doesn't move the needle uh, terribly far. Uh, but we could use some additional fund balance to offset tax rates. So I'll, even though the proposed the 500,000 would move it to $1.53 as projected. If we used more fund balance, that would reel that back. Um, I'm also always mindful of how much fund balance we use because it needs to be sustainable. You can't take from the piggy bank and not replenish the piggy bank all the time because then the piggy bank is empty, right? So it's a delicate balance, but I think we've moved our fund balance into a position that's fairly healthy that uh, we could have an impact on the tax rate while still providing some uh, additional funds to carry out important missions at the school department. I would agree with my fellow counselors that have talked about the tiered reductions. Yes, this doesn't move it far enough. I would agree with that. Again, trying to find where the appetite of this council is finally for an override. Uh, I would argue that even though there have been a number of budgets that we have approved what has been presented by the school department, it would be Dave Witham's observation that we have never funded our school department adequately. Never, ever, ever. When I was in high school, I was in band one year. I was a terrible trumpet player, but we had ho horrible uniforms then. Uh, some of you might recall the little dog and pony show I did not too long ago where I had a can of spray paint. Uh, I got the field ready for today's opening baseball game up at the Pines, and I purchased... I don't know, a couple hundred dollars worth of field marking paint and chalk. Uh, and that gets paid for in part by the boosters, not the school department. Um, so, and by the way, the players all have to pay to play still. So until we get rid of pay to play and people shelling out of their own wallets to stripe a ball field, uh, I'm not sure I could say that we've adequately funded the school department. 
but I get why that is done. Anyway, further discussion on the proposed amendment. Councillor Vincent, you're recognized. Thank you, Your Honor. However, the school did get what they wanted. Maybe not in your eyes, but they still got the budget that they proposed here from the most part that I've worked here for six years. I'm in favor of um, giving the school more money because the thing about being a counselor is you got the city side, you got the school side. And the city side, realistically, in years past, maybe not since I came on board, but they've always taken the back seat to the school in some way. We've always kind of lived until we decided to bring it up a little bit more and pay more taxes. I'm all in favor of going into fund balance just as long as we don't disrupt our bond uh, loan ability for bonding money. Uh, like you said, uh, you also said that we might not be able to bring that much down. But if we could pick away at it and bring it down, I may be in favor of giving the school everything that they want. But we're going to have to pick away at fund balance somehow, some way. Councilor Pepin, you're recognized. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess where I'm in a dilemma here right now is that I, I've, I listened to this council probably, what, six months ago when we talked about the way the toilets are in the middle school, uh, basically how and blame the school department for not fixing it and whatever. And, and sitting on their boards before, I know that they've wanted to fix it, but when it comes to educating a kid, they're going to put the money in the education of the kid and, and not probably into the building. I don't want to get at a point that will or at that stage that they're going to have to take take away money from building maintenance and everything else to educate the students because the students are going to be the number one thing and they ought to be uh, and I don't know what the right answer is out of here I have a hard problem going with the figure that's going uh, what really bothers me the most is that the state can't tell us a figure or give us a figure that's even equal to the last year's figure, mm -hmm. which I think when we had this meeting probably six months ago of the extra funding that came back, you wanted it all back into the school budget, which you got. Me, I'm trying to think, why can't we pocket some of that money so we're in here? And I asked the school board if we were going to guarantee the same amount of money next year, and you kind of like said yes, and they cut it. And you have no control over it. And I understand that. That's what teased me off. Our budget system is totally screwed up because the state can do whatever they want after we pass the budget. We have no control over it. So it's like trying to plan our, our future ahead of us, and we don't know how much money we got to plan with. So it, it's, it, it just budget time just drives me absolutely bonkers. Uh, and I blame the state on that. Yeah. So <laughs> after that, I, I'm just looking for probably some advice of what we would look to kind of like keep this stationary it is as it is right now and going into fund balance. How much could we go into fund balance offset? Is that a question for the finance director? Yes, I guess so. It, it, I, I want to be realistic here. Or get, get me some ideas. <laughs> I mean, it's really up to you. You've, you've, we're right about at 12, a little over 12% of what's been proposed. So our, our goal or our fund balance policy is between five and 17. So you could use 7% of that as long as you don't go below the five. I'm not recommending that, but I'm just saying it's, it's really kind of up to you guys. We're fairly strong um, in our fund balance right now. We have a reasonable fund balance. The issue is going to be eventually, I don't know when, eventually it catches up to you. And it might not be next year. It might not be the year after. We've had this discussion. We've been able to maintain a strong fund balance. But sooner or later it does where you don't have that to use, and now you're back into raising your budget because you're losing that revenue. Source. Councilor Pepin, you're still recognized. Yeah, thank you. Could could you tell me what the figure would be that if we approve taking – adding $500,000 on, on the budget this way and taking the rest of the money that the school department is requesting out of the rest, the difference between the fund balance, what the, what the, what the figures would be, if you understand what I'm talking about. 
because I'm French. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, you would need, I don't, what's your total? It's it's 1.1 1. 1 something. Yeah, so you'd need 676,000 the additional that you'd have to take out of fund balance. So you'd be using a total, a total of 2.1 million, 2.176. That would make up the difference so it would be because there's already money for fund balance utilized in the preparation of the budget that's correct right so what would that put us percentage wise as far as fund balance It would bring you down to about 5.2 million, and you'd still be at approximately 8.8 percent. .8%. But that's before we close the book. So there'll be additional fund balance when we close year end that we'll go back into it. Further discussion on the amendment, Councillor Vincent. Thank you again. The only thing about using a lot of fund balance is, and we've already spoke about it, it's going to come and get us. So it doesn't really change much except for, yeah, they're funded this year, but it's going to come and get us. Uh, just a little recap of, and I hate to go back to last year, but it's, 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 it's a point. It's, it's not a bad point. It's just a point that we had a bunch of people come here and wanted us to fund from the state, which I'm all for funding for the state. It was $2.1 million roughly. Uh, we had a lot of accusations that night that the fire alarm system didn't work and the roofs were leaking. I'm hoping that all that stuff is fixed now. I'm sure it is. Maybe not. Uh, I'm hoping it is. Uh, just to be uh, on point, there was never anything wrong with the fire alarm system. It was looked at and there was nothing wrong with it. So there's a lot of accusations that come out during budget time. That's my point, Your Honor. I'm not trying to you know, cloud it. If it's a good point or a bad point, it's just a point that needs to be said. Um, but we're still here. Even though we take fund balance, we still have to pay it. Thank you. Councillor Parity, Cat and Zero, Councillor Messier, then Councillor Gibson. Thank you. Um, whew, kind of trying to keep track here. Um, you and me both. Yeah, I just to expedite was going to share my uh, my um, intent here. I think I will support your amendment at the five hundred thousand with the intent of introducing then additional because then you know, not everybody's going to want to perhaps go over that, but maybe some people want to keep it lower. Um, so just throwing that out there, if this comes to a vote right now, I'll support this amendment. Um, but I would like to see it higher. Um, it's very helpful. Um, Scott, to know that fund balance, I have the exact same question. What does this dollar-wise look for the percentage? Um, if it brings us down only to 8.8, .8, that's still 3.8% above the recommended amount that we don't go below. Plus, um, as you mentioned, there's already a bunch of uh, additional revenue that's going to go back into the fund um, before we close out the books. Um, I'll add also that we heard just a few examples of unfilled positions. I know um, multiple departments have unfilled positions. Those are budgeted for already. Those are all going back into the fund balance. If we um, did not approve the recommended budget, that would mean lower salary, uh, lower salaries in the job listings that might uh, continue to uh, go back into the fund balance. So I'm in favor of this amendment and would be looking to add more. Um, I did want to, even though, uh, again, we're not line iteming here, but I do want to talk a little bit about the SYC since um, if this tiered budget is what we're going with and if we only added $500,000 um, to it, SYC is one of the things uh, that will get cut in addition to some positions. Um, I know there has been some discussion and, and I've seen some, some back and forth about what would happen to the SYC program or what would happen to any programming for the students. Um, discussions have been had with YMCA and others that there could be a zero cost to us way of replacing some of those programs. 
what I'm concerned about, and maybe um, I don't know if the uh, superintendent or anyone would be able to speak to this, is we have heard a lot from residents who love the SYC program and wouldn't have been able to um, stay at their jobs without this very low cost, under the cost of childcare programming. Um, so if we cut the SYC program, which is a very minimal cost to parents, the YMCA brings in a program that's no cost to us. Does that mean all of that cost is going to the parents? Because I would not want to support programming that turns around and brings that cost back to the parents. Is that a question um, for school staff? Because yes, rules have been suspended. That can be answered. Yes. If if you know, uh, um, I know that YMCA is just maybe one option, but yep. so the superintendent the and I have met with both the YMCA as well as Rochester Child Care. Um, we have a proposal from YMCA and Rochester Child Care should have it to us by the beginning of the week. You are correct. It would be zero cost to the district, to the city. It would be all funded through parent fees. Um, they do offer scholarships and um, assistance with state assistance, which we cannot provide as a district because we're not a licensed, we're not a licensed child care, whereas they can provide that opportunity for families to have a lower cost cost to them. Their, their prices are a little higher than what we charge, um, but again, they can get that assistant through the state um, that we can't provide. So their cost may be lower for families. We were told today that the threshold that they qualify for those benefits has been raised for, you know, the salary amounts have been raised, so more families would qualify. I mean, I don't know for sure. Um, so we are looking at all those options and we're going to present them to the board, you know, comparisons between each of the programs and then what we offer. Yeah, and what makes this real difficult is it seems like, well, in the last two years anyway, uh, SYC has kind of been on the chopping block, and it's hard to keep staff uh, in place when they know it's the potential to be cut. And so Katie's right. We met with, again, the YMCA and the Rochester Child Care uh, folks, and uh, we, were, you know, we told them we're waiting to see what you folks do, and then we'll contact them afterwards. So. Of course. May I ask a follow-up? Yeah. Uh, currently, SYC, and I, I stated it at the workshop. I don't like its funding structure because it's so fractured. Uh, a, a portion comes from the city. A portion is a school budget, and then uh, the users actually do pay currently. So there, there is that fee as well. So you're, that's correct. No question. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, thanks again for taking my question. Is that the one that Maureen Jackman had done? Yeah. I'm very proud to say that my company actually, Hilltop Fireworks, donated $5,000 towards that program when they needed it, and no one else would step up. So that's I feel proud of that. Um, but also now on the flip side of it, uh, if the YMCA is going to come in and do almost equal justice, it's like a wash, right? But, but you don't know because the numbers aren't in yet. That's what you just I'm stated, not sure right? it's a wash. It, my guess is it'll be a tad higher for the parents. However, the, the scholarship offerings are enticing, and, so, and you know it, that that's a plus if thank you, you brought in a, another a third party to right. operate it. Um, in my opinion, um, I think we're in the education business. We're really not in the child care business. Right. However, I understand why it was established. I understand it's a great program. I understand parents value it. Um, we're not going to let something not have something for the parents. I just want to make sure I make that clear that regardless of what you vote on, we're, we're, we've, we've got other plans in place in case, you know, it doesn't come to fruition. In follow-up. You may. Thank you. Does the school still offer a uh, child care program where they actually watch? They don't offer that no more? No. I remember when I was in school. It was a long time ago. Sorry. It wasn't a child care program. It was actually a teaching class for, um, oh, it was a topper tots program, I think is right, what you're referencing, right. but we don't have that program anymore. Darn yeah, you know, I'll say this about Thank SYC. You. I, I struggle with the way that it is funded now. This bif trifurcation uh, makes no sense to me now. Uh, I, I did plan on making a proposed amendment on the city side of the budget to eliminate the $50,000 portion there. Uh, I think it's if it's important to the school department, it's something you need to fund, maybe in cooperation with user fees or look for another alternative. Um, I, I think that just cleans it up a lot because it's just... It's too fractured the way that it is now, in my humble opinion. Councilor Parody, Catton Zero, and then Councilor Messier. Uh, thank you. You may not have this information, but I'm just wondering um, what you think the potential impact to parents could be. Like, what's the average cost for one student or two students for an average family for SYC? And then 
without a scholarship, what would it be for the YMCA? And then are scholarships potentially covering all of that or just a portion? Yeah, I don't have that. Um, we're still waiting, like I said, on the proposal from Rochester Child Care, so I'm not exactly sure. Uh, um, I could, I, I don't have them on the top of my head, but I can get you those costs. Okay. Yeah, and I do want to say that the YMCA offers this type of programming throughout the state, large cities, smaller cities, um, and they've been doing it a long time. Um, the other thing is the uh, Rochester Child Care Center currently uh, is providing uh, the same type of service in Rochester in six of their schools. They'll also be gearing up for when the new elementary school opens in Rochester, and next year they're gearing up for middle school. So both of these agencies have experience in, in doing this, providing this type of service. Um, one more. Um, I, I'm, my question is around staffing. Um, I'm familiar with some of the staffing challenges of some of those organizations. So in your discussions with them, are they confident that they could staff that? One of the program? things that we, we asked both uh, agencies, organizations, I should say, is that we keep the current staff that we already have, uh, the folks that are already working with the students. So that was a priority, and they agreed with us on that. Great. Thank you. Councilor Messier. Thank you. Um, uh, right now, I support 500000 I cannot support bringing the fund balance down to 5%. I would love to give the money to the schools, but until we do some due diligence on the city side, we may have to dip into that to help, because there's a list of some things that were cut out of our budget that I think of, of concern. Um, what that number is, I don't know. I mean, 500 is a starting point, um, and we'll, we'll see what goes. I just don't want to bring that fund balance to 5%. That's all. And, and for the record, and thank you for seconding my motion, Councilor Messier, I used 500,000 knowing it was one tier versus 400. And the math was just more complicated, just kind of rounding. I'm going to go with Councilor Goodwin here. Thank you. Um, a, a question for um, school administrators. Um, it sounds like, and so I guess uh, riffing off of, of what Councilor Messier said, I, I agree. I think my inclination for this evening, I'm in favor of supporting the 500,000. I'm generally in favor of supporting more, but until we sort of noodle through the city side, how much more I think is up for discussion. Um, you know, previous to the conversation with SYC and pending uh, the conversation on the city side of the budget, I, my inclination is to fund uh, essentially all of the tier three and two budget reductions to prevent those programs from being cut, of which SIC, uh, SYC is one. It sounds like, however, there are potentially viable alternatives that could save the district $100,000. And I am assuming even if those tier two reductions are approved, you would consider advancing alternatives in order to save yourselves the 100000 that's proposed. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Just, I, just, you know, putting it out there. So it's like, if, you know, I, my inclination is we fund it as a, as a important program. Uh, knowing that uh, it's a backstop, should one of these other programs not work out, if this, if staff and their uh, experience uh, is able to find a third party that provides a comparable service at lower cost, then they are incentivized to do that. We would support them in that, and then that money would either be reallocated in the budget or come back to the general fund, right? Yes. Great. Thank you. Is there further discussion? Um, Councillor Mishu. Thank you. Councilor Vincent, i just let you know that last Tuesday, I had a conversation with somebody from the high school. Yep. The roof is still leaking in the library. I hear that this person, he was very upset that the kids have to go through this. There's uh, sheets of plastic over books, bookshelves. There's a few buckets. I don't think it's funny. You're, you're smiling. Kids have to go through this. Brackets scattered here. I didn't especially say how many, but they're catching water coming from the roof. That's a problem. I understand. 
we gave you money that you got from the state aid to help repair for that roof. Did you actually use it for the roof? Or did somebody screw up and uh, get to get back up I, there? I think there's it? a question if money was used for the roof in all of that. The money was used for its intended purposes on the roof. The issue that you're talking about, the leak, has been ongoing for a long time. When they built an addition, um, there's weeping going on and some driving rains and you get some water in there. That's something our uh, facilities director is, is exploring to see how that can be rectified. That wasn't part of the project for the roof. It's something else other than the roof, if I'm making sense. It, it's just the way the, the addition was um, built oh, yeah. that's causing that weeping problem. Okay, thank you. And another thing, yes, Council Witham, I did vote for the pay increases for the teachers, but until you see it in black and white exactly what they're getting, I never, over 40 years at the shipyard, I never got from one position and taken a higher position, I never got a pay increase of anywhere from eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000. If everybody's fine with that, that's fine. You want to give the school board my money? I'm fine with that. But when it comes down to the bottom line at the end, we have to go and pass the final budget, and it's not at the tax gap, it's going to be a no for me. We have the answer to the taxpayers. Well, I want to make sure that the taxpayers get take care of not being tucked to this year. Thank you. Councilor Gibson, you're next, then Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Thank you for your patience. Um, I'm, I'm not sure on the mechanics, but if we pull from the fund balance this year, to make up in lieu of a tax override. Will the new construction and reassessment project to a budget without having to substantially change the tax rate? Or I know that may be a tough question. I'm just trying to figure. Yeah, I have no way of knowing because I don't know what next year's CPI is going to be. I have no idea what the net construction value is going to be. Um, I can't even venture a guess on that. We're just dealing with it, what we know right now. Uh, yeah, just point of information here that we are discussing a motion to increase the school department bottom line by 500000 And I do appreciate the, the thoughtful process of how we, and I'll use your term, Councilor Goodwin, noodle through this because for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction, and we're talking about that being the fund balance. But the, right now, there's no motion before us to do anything with fund balance beyond what's in the manager's proposed budget. So to stick to the question at hand, even though I know it's all related. Council Vincent. Thank you, and I'll stick to the question. So if I vote for this right now, we haven't really gone over the tax cap because we don't know what the other side is. So I could actually be a yes vote right now but then revisit the tax cap later on. Am I correct for point of information? That is correct. And for this motion to pass, it only needs a simple majority. Uh, the final vote on the budget, if above the tax cap number, would require the supermajority or two-thirds of council, which is six votes. So just to let you know where this council is coming from, I may uh, take in the opportunity to go ahead and vote for the extra money. But like I said... In the end, unless we come up with some real creative ways, I'm going to also be a no vote. Thank you. Further discussion on the amendment to appropriate an additional $500,000 to the school department bottom line. Seeing no further discussion, the chair wants to do a roll call vote. Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Messier? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Catanzaro? Yes. Michaud? Yes. Any further amendments to the school department bottom line? Councilor Parody Catanzaro. Um, I'll make an amendment to add 317, sorry, $325,000 to the budget. Um, and I'll explain why if I get a second. Motion by Councilor Parity Catton Zero to uh, add an additional three hundred twenty-five thousand to the school department bottom line. Is there a second? Seeing no second, the motion fails. 
Was that a second, Councilor Goodwin? For discussion purposes, yes. Councilor Goodwin seconds for the purpose of discussion. Discussion, Councilor Parity Catton's area recognized. Thank you. Um, this is um, my intent of this, while not presuming to line item uh, the school board's budget, is 325 would cover the positions um, listed here and not the SYC program. The reason I'm proposing that is it sounds like we may have a good alternative that would save the taxpayers money for the SYC program to continue without it being in this budget. Um, so I guess the next the next step up for me is not cutting these positions. So that's a middle school classroom teacher, a part time custodian, Idlehurst special education para position, another special education para position for the middle school. Uh, a part-time foreign language and a grounds maintenance position. Um, and I'll just say on the grounds maintenance position, um, I know that we have had in the past um, potential litigation come before us for unsalted sidewalks, and that was directly due to a grounds maintenance position. So um, for my position, $325, sorry, $325,000 uh, covers, um, makes it so that this budget on the school side is not cutting any people's jobs. Further discussion, Councilor Vincent. Thank you. Okay, so now we're reaching out really heavy, um, and I don't think we could ever make this up, so I'm gonna vote no. Uh, but you know what? If we do find the magic money, then you can, I think that the, the amendment could be made then, instead of trying to make it now and then making it a cut again. That's my just my opinion, thank you. I'll go for a first time here. I, I think I could find myself to that position, but I would like to deal with the city side of the budget and have a conversation around use of fund balance before moving in that direction. Further discussion, Councilor Goodwin. Um, generally, generally agree with that sentiment as well. Uh, I, I guess a clarification in front of order on what our objective is this evening, having not gone through the budget process tonight, um, are we anticipating to table this at the end of the meeting and continue the conversation? So, so there are a couple of things in front of us just to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, it is entirely possible that we could noodle our way through this entire thing and, and uh, all die of heat exhaustion, <laughs> perhaps, right? Um, I would note that uh, council adjourns at 10 p.m. unless there is a suspension of council rules, so that hour is upon us here, uh, having not even started on the city side. Uh, if we do revert back to talking about just fund balance and city side of the budget, I would remove myself from the chair and invite the mayor back up. If we go back into the school portion, we would play this musical chair thing again, which I'm fine to do, uh, but uh, just kind of just, that's the lay of the land. I don't know if that helps you or not. That, that does help, I feel. I feel better. I um, <laughs> um, so my, my inclination is I, I agree with uh, uh, Councillor uh, Parity Cotanzaro's intent. Um, I, too, would like to keep those items in the budget, given how long this meeting has gone, where we are in the evening, and the general appetite I'm hearing from fellow councillors of, of wanting to work through some of the city side before adding additional um, uh, money to the school side. Uh, I will, can I withdraw my second? You may. I will withdraw my second in uh, the hope of tabling this to continue the conversation and hopefully adding it back in later. So second has been withdrawn. Is there a second to Councilor Parity Catanzaro's motion to add 325,000 more to the school department bottom line? Seeing that, I'll ask a second for the discussion. Is that a motion to table, Councilor Goodwin? Sure. I'll second it. Motion by Councillor Goodwin. The table seconded by Councillor Vincent. That is a non-debatable motion. All those in favor of tabling the FY25 budget signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hold. Motion and the ruling of the chair passes. The budget is tabled. Welcome back, Your Honor. I think I need a raise. <laughs> point of order. May I request a recess, Your Honor? Uh, we have. Let's do a quick point of order, and then. Okay. Yes.
During this recess, is there any way we can turn on the air conditioning or something? Yeah, I know. Why is it a million degrees? That's all. Thanks. A great point. Um, all right. Without objection, council will stand in brief recess. Yes, we are back. We have officially hit the council witching hour. Um, with that, we have tabled the budget. We will have our special budget meeting to continue these discussions <laughs> next Monday at 7. Is that right? Se nope. Excuse me. Hold. 6. <laughs> Three, no. Mr. Mayor, could I make a suggestion? One second. Let me get the time on this so everybody has it. 6 p.m. So next Monday at 6 p.m., we will continue our discussions. We have tabled the budget. It will be a meeting specific to the budget only. So we can go for hours and hours if you guys would like. But I would love, I would love, I would love if in advance of that meeting, you again get questions answered from appropriate city or school staff so that less discussion is had and more answers are had. Okay. I'm fine if you need to share those out for transparency's sake. That's more than fine. But I do find in discussions like this, and I understand it's difficult, and I understand that they are trained and they are paid to do this, but it can be very difficult to answer a question off the cuff. It is much better if they have time to plan and get you a proper response. So please use the week wisely. Okay. I would also appreciate, as council, if you would... Maybe just like share your thoughts uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Maybe we can have a quick discussion before we untable so that there's a little bit of, um, I don't know, airing of how people have thought over the week. Maybe that's out of order, maybe not. Just throwing it out there. Um, certainly, I want everything to be uh, publicly shared. Please, obviously, if you are having conversations amongst yourselves don't do so that in a way that creates a quorum <laughs> I think we know that rule mr. mayor yes thank you is this a regular council meeting or is it a work special budget workshop okay meeting? yes Question. Special, special excuse me not a workshop you're right it is a special <laughs> meeting where we will only discuss the budget there will be no other agenda items okay that's, will sorry, there... I apologize for the uh, clarification there'll yes. be no public comment or that was my question if public as, comment no yeah as far allowed. as i understand it will will just right well maybe maybe correct me if i'm it wrong it is a I, public is meeting i this. think the mayor can set the agenda as he yeah, says yeah i have yeah. Uh, yeah great point i've yet to set the agenda i'd be open to that um sitting here thinking i think yes it is appropriate to have public comment uh, if Agreed. we are discussing the budget, yep. um, I think it would be helpful. So we will, yeah, I have not yet prepared the agenda for next week. Keep your ears and eyes open. Um, but yeah, let's include that. Certainly you all have time to do, you know, public or your own council comments, other agenda items likely to be included. We don't really have to worry about consent calendar. We can do that at the next meeting. Yeah, I would say normal comments, periods. We're not going to report out from standing committees. We'll save that for our next meeting. And the only item we'll have will be that. And then you have your normal closing comments, and then we'll adjourn. I think that seems, again, please wait for the agenda to come out Follow up. by the end of the meeting, or the end of the week. Excuse Follow up to yes. my question. Um, could I suggest that um, if you do decide to have public comment that we just strictly limit it to the five minutes with yep. no override <laughs> again it would be up to council if they would like to overrule uh the the council rules for that i can't say well, that's that, not <clears throat> but we would have to put that to a vote if we wanted to overrule the rules uh, but yes i will i've since your original comment about me not paying attention to the clock i've been about trying to count to five minutes if i may okay. if i may uh yes go ahead thank you yeah i think it's only appropriate to have uh comments because people may want to come and 
have some comments about the budget. Not that the room has to be packed with either city side or school side because that bridge will come to, so to speak, uh, towards the end. So, um, Point well taken. Thank you. Certainly. Absolutely. Uh, other quick comments about that before we move on and get ourselves back to home. Okay. That will bring us to Agenda item 17, comments by visitors. Summers with City Council or Mayor's Office welcomes all visitors and encourages you to voice your opinions and views at Council meetings in accordance with Council Rule 7-C. A time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend rules. Speakers shall not enter into a debate with any person, Mayor, Council members, City staff, or Department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Public comments. Okay, moving on. Uh, 18 is closing comments by council members. Councilor Witham, start us off. Nothing tonight, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Goodwin. I'm good, thank you. Thank you. Councilor Cameron. Just a quick reminder, our first Don't Trash Summersworth is this Saturday, 2 to 3. We'll be meeting at the Home Depot parking lot. Um, I look forward to having a nice crew for our first event. So if you can come out and join us, please do. And that's all I have. Thank you, Councillor Messier. Yep, here it comes. After the Monday's meeting, the 22nd, I will be resigning my position. I can't put up with this anymore. This is, this is, this is ass clown. So, and don't give me any awards, rocking chair. I'm just leaving. That's all I want. I don't need accolades. I just want to go. Okay, Councillor Pepin. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Councilor Vincent. Just one comment. You add a lot to this council. Please don't do this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. Think about it. Councilor Gibson. <coughs> no comment. Councilor Parity Catanzaro. No comment. Councilor uh, Mishu. No comment. Thank you. Next is future agenda items we have our budget meeting scheduled for the next meeting are there other future agenda items before we move on okay 20 non-public session we have none uh last is adjournment councillor goodwin moves to the city council stand and adjournment to the next regularly scheduled meeting seconded by councillor vincent question before council is adjournment if you're in favor you'll say by saying aye. if you're aye. opposed you'll say by saying nay all in favor aye, aye. all opposed councillor stand in adjournment